And we are live all across Northwest and West Central Ohio here on WOSN. A big matchup in the Green Meadows Conference as us, Craig McCord Field in Ayersville as the 6-1 and Ayersville Pilots play host to the undefeated Antwerp Archers. Hello again, everyone, alongside Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. Miles, it, uh, it's gotten a little cooler out here. The sun's gone down. I, I miss the 70-degree days. Mm -hmm. But here we are getting down the last three weeks of the regular season and a big matchup tonight here. A couple of state-ranked teams in Division 7 doing battle with first place of the GMC on the line. I've been fired up all week long. This is a huge game, biggest game in Northwest Ohio. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now, watching two state-ranked teams battle out for the top spot in the GMC with the mayor of Northwest Ohio, Randy Roberts. And buddy, we have great football weather. We're outside in it. We are right. in the stands. We're gonna be there with the guys. We're gonna be cold just like they are. And the, going to be cold on the field, <laughs> but it's going to be hot action for sure. Both these teams can put up some major points. You see the uh, rankings there. That is the latest uh, state rankings in Division 7. Antwerp comes in at number 4. Ayersville at number 14. Both teams battling for playoff spots as well with the computer points. Hey, that's us. I'm the guy in the hat, and that's Miles. As uh, Antwerp comes in also fourth in Region 26, while Ayersville is second in Region 26. So a lot uh, not only will... Uh, Kind of the deciding factor of the GMC. Also a couple big games coming up the last couple weeks of the season. But sole possession of first place on the line. Perhaps, you know, the difference between maybe one or two home playoff games. And Miles, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this one. Let's start with Antwerp. Number one offense in the GMC coming in at 392 yards a game. And it's run through junior quarterback. Carson Ultimus. Yeah, Carson Ultimus. Ultimus Prime, Mr. Cool. I mean, you watch him. He is stone cold. 20 touchdown passes this year, only one interception. I had to go back and look at that one a couple times. I was amazed by that. He can throw the football around over 1,700 yards, 1,720, 20 TDs, one interception. Oh, by the way, he leads the team in rushing with 459 yards and 10 TDs on the ground. He's got a host of talent around him to throw the ball to. Landon Brewer, big time player. Uh, ten, eight touchdowns for him, so over 600 yards, 35 catches. And you take a look at Reed Leasty, another good player on that offensive side. The running back, if it's not Ultimus getting yards, it is Leasty, 423 yards on the ground for him this year. Yeah, Leasty also 234 receiving yards, nine total touchdowns. But you mentioned uh, Brewer, the top receiver, at least yards-wise, in the GMC. Just a ton of kind of skill guys, and that's what Ant Antwerp has kind of hung their hat on this year. Yeah, Brewer is just one of those guys. Of course, we've seen him on the basketball floor. Mm -hmm. Great player. Big shot Brewer is what we call him when we have him in basketball. He's got ice through it in his veins. No moment's ever too big for him, but he's a, a big kid, 6'2", 6'3", and what they're going to do, Randy, is they're going to try and isolate him on a side, get a corner one-on-one, -on -one, and then why not go vertical to him because he's a big play threat. Hey, let's talk a little bit about this uh, defense for Antwerp. One thing sticks out. When you look through the numbers, one thing that both of us kind of text each other back through the week, make sure this was correct. This is a defense that's given up 12 <laughs> yeah. points total. That's two touchdowns right. in the first half. It, it was one of those stats. It was like, this can't be right. And then you check it again, you check it again, and it is. That is impressive stuff. As Travis Leasty, he is the defensive coordinator. And a lot of it, Randy, takes the other team, they get out of their element because they score the ball so well on offense. Then it kind of puts your your offense behind, so mm -hmm. it allows Antwerp to dictate terms defensively. One of their top players is a junior linebacker, and Cyrus Gale leads the team of tackles with 49. Yeah, Cyrus is a physical player. He's def he definitely, definitely jumps off the field to you. He'll play right guard on offense. They'll pull him a lot and on defense. He leads the team. He'll be a headhunter. He'll hunt down that football. But a big thing that they do so well is keep guys off the linebackers. And you look at the defensive line. They're anchored by Kendrick Robinson. He, he is a big dude, man. 6'4", 6'6", 330 pounds. He is an athlete, too. We've seen him in basketball. He is a tough dude. Kendrick Robinson does a lot of good things for them on the defensive and offensive line of scrimmage. Hey, before we get any further into our pregame, we need to tell you that our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Ayersville and Antwerp <coughs> excuse me, is the State Bank. Invest in Northwest and West Central Ohio. Skilled objective and caring financial planners. All right, Miles, let's now look at the pilots of Ayersville coming in at 6-1 and 4-0. And oh, but I think before we do that, 
will step aside as I believe the Ayersville Marching Band is ready to perform our national anthem. Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here at Craig McCord Field in Ayersville. And Miles, let's talk about those host of pilots coming in at six and one, really a fumble away from also being undefeated, also four and zero oh in the GMC, number two offense in the conference at 333 yards a game. Saw their win against Tenor last week. One person I think both of us pretty impressed with was that quarterback on that offense in Blake Howenstein. Yeah, quarterback only in name only, right? He's, he's kind of like a fullback, the way he runs that football. And we talked to him, uh, people are probably really wanting to know. We talked to him in pregame about his hair. He just uses shampoo, folks. He's got unbelievable hair. It's the prettiest hair you're ever going to see, and he's a really good football player. But Blake Howenstein, and, Howenstein, and you talk about the running back and the running game of Owen Burner, who's a, the overall ground gainer leader in the GMC. Those two, it's really a two-headed monster in this offense. It is a team that likes to run the football. They'll run jet sweep, and you'll see the quarterback run between the tackles. Yeah, we uh, talked about how uh, Antwerp, the top team offensively, in the conference, really, these two teams do it the complete opposite. Sure do. And we're up at 249 passing yards, 143 running yards a game. Ayersville, 214 rushing yards, 119 passing yards. When they do throw the ball, that's some pretty good targets, though, and a couple guys that we saw last week. Yeah, some really big targets, right? Abe Delano, uh, play action was huge last week in their win over Tenora, and then Tyson Schlachter. How do you miss him when he's running up the field? Those two big guys came up through with big catches, and Ray Wolfram also makes some big catches for him as well. But it, it's the guys up front who played extremely well against Tenora, guys like Brady Clark and Cade Hannencraft. Remember Brady Clark last week? He was just an absolute monster. Monster. They'd pull him from his left guard position, lead the way. There was one time he just picked a guy up and threw him to the sideline. You remember that play? Mm -hmm. So this offensive line, they're going to have to stay hot like they were last Number week seven, if they're going to get the win Burner. because ball control going to be important Owen for Ayersville tonight. To uh, senior night here at Ayersville, so they're introducing their uh, seniors on a special night as Ayersville is actually going to finish two games on the road at Wayne Trace Number at nine, Fairview. Weston so this one really their last big Weston contest to to for Antwerp week 10. A big one it. seems looming when they travel to Edgerton. It's a couple of big games yet to go in the GMC. Let's turn our attention now to the Ayersville defense. A couple of names that you already mentioned. How about senior linebacker Weston McGuire leading this team, just a tackling machine. And as you said, kind of knocks down anything that moves. Yeah, Weston McGuire loves the hit. He's a contact magnet. Not only the leading tackler on this Ayersville defense, but leading tackler in all the GMC. Weston McGuire is going to have to play well because that RPO action that Antwerp likes to run, it's going to put that linebacker spot in bind. He's going to have to play the run and the pass really well tonight. But the guys up front that are going to have to get pressure on Carson Ultimus, talking about Cordaway, Clark, Bodie, Schlachter, and Delano, if they can't apply some kind of pressure to Carson Ultimus, boy, it's going to be a real tough day for that secondary. Yeah, a real uh, neat thing they do here on senior night. You see the seniors with the uh, tunnel. It's like some uh, family members might be some... Uh, some younger players as well, so uh, kids that kind of want to look up to some older players. So, uh, yeah, they also painted the numbers of each player on the field as mm -hmm. well. So that that's a great senior send off. So I like the black look out of the uh, pilots tonight as well. Is, is that black or dark blue? That I might think, be dark blue. I think it's dark blue, but I I do like it because you can see the numbers a lot easier than last week's road uniforms. Cannot Those tell you. blue numbers were a little tough to see. Cannot tell you how important that is in our profession. <laughs> Cannot. All right, Miles, let's get to everyone's favorite part of our uh, pregame. Let's take a look at our state bank checks of the game, and let's start with the visiting Antwerp Archers. Yeah, number one, the eyes have it. Keep your eyes out of the backfield if you're the secondary of Antwerp. Remember, Tenora, a week ago, they got really conscious on running up on the last scrimmage against run plays, and all of a sudden, pop pass gets by you. So keep your eyes out of the backfield if you're the Antwerp secondary. Number two, brew up some points with Brewer. Oh, boy, why not? Landon Brewer, 35 catches, 662 yards. Only 18.9, yes, 18.9 yards per catch, six TDs. You've got to go vertical to the big guy. Brew up some points. And number three, Mr. Robinson's neighborhood, Kendrick Robinson. He is the offensive center on the line of scrimmage, and he is a defensive nose tackle. The big fella, 6'6", 330 pounds, and he's mean. So if they're going to win the line of scrimmage, Mr. Robinson's neighborhood, he's got to get it done. 
Now, from those that don't follow you on Twitter, was he mean when you took a picture? The of double him bicep and put him on, pose on was impressive, wasn't it? Okay. Yes, he was a big mean fella at practice. And how about some uh, state bank checks of the game for the Ayersville Pilots? Yellow flags are very, very bad. Remember this: yellow flags are very, very bad. How many times last week were they hurt by their own penalties? Right? False start after false start. You're not going to win tonight if you put self-inflicted wounds on yourself. So stay away from penalties. Number two, do what you do. Don't try to scheme too much against this Antwerp team. Don't drop too many guys in coverage. Go after them, attack. That's what you do, right? Be who you are. And then number three, hands on. Talking about hands on, you got to jam receivers. Don't let them cross your face. Don't let them get All in right. the secondary run in free. Right. you got to get hands on. Play physical in the secondary. I was five yards past the line of scrimmage. That's a penalty. Yeah, Yellow flags are very, very bad. All right. So looking forward to this one. This meeting, by the way, 46th all time in this series. Ayersville leads the series 31-14. Antwerp a year ago snapped a two-game losing streak with a 26-21 win, but Ayersville has taken seven of the last ten. White Hat looks cold. He does. Look at him. He's already got the gloves on. He's got, what would you call that? It's not a turtleneck. It's a, a chin neck. What is that thing? <laughs> He's going to be warm. I like the guy. He was smart. He grew a beard for this game, too. That's going to yeah. keep you warm. He just started that this morning. <laughs> so Antwerp won the toss and received. Believe that the words was, we want the ball first. Mm -hmm. Why not? You're so. averaging 51 points a game. <laughs> Who wouldn't want the ball first? So looking forward to what should be a good one here at Craig McCord Field. Great setting. Couple of teams in the top 15 in the state in D7. Good crowd. See the home stands filled, visiting side as well. And this is going to be a big matchup. Thought Antwerp maybe a year away. Took some big steps a year ago. We saw them that opening playoff game when they brought in Patrick Henry. And I think the, the talk was, yeah, okay, Archer's you're going to see kind 13, of a perennial Kate team. Winslow, Let's see what you can do and able to hold Kate off. Lee. Pretty good offensive attack. Yeah, Carson Ultimus was impressive in that game a year ago. Remember, it came down to the last uh, play of the game, but they got the win. It's a program that two years ago, um, due to COVID, got to get in the playoffs, and they got a good uh, win over Waynesfield Goshen yeah. that really kind of propelled this program from there. <laughs> Ayersville's got this one teed up, just about ready to go. I want to thank Antwerp Exchange Bank being our scoreboard sponsor for tonight. It's one of these games, Randy, that if you're a defensive coordinator tonight, you're like, oh, boy. <laughs> Both teams have been able to put, put, put up points in a big way. Short kick. This one's going to be fielded on a hop at about the 20-yard line. And it's going to be good field position to start for the Archers. Well, you see Weston McGuire, the tackling machine, first one down on the kickoff. The linebacker, the senior, leads the way. Stops Reed Leasty from a, a bigger return, but pretty good starting position for this Antwerp offense that will utilize a lot of no-huddle principles. They'll change a lot of formations, and you'll see, they already see Ultimus directing traffic. Well, they're going to start from their own 37. So Antwerp, there's going to be a lot of blue. Antwerp with the white with the blue and the black pants as opposed to the dark blue or black with the uh, powder blue. Looking to throw first down, short pass. This one's going to be complete as they will hit Camden Fuller, kind of that third receiver in this set. Some pretty impressive numbers and a good gain on first down. Yeah, Camden Fuller is a guy, when you watch him at practice, he is an athlete. Got some serious quicknesses. Averages 23.3 yards per carry. Just nothing more than a double hitch. Picking on the outside linebacker where he makes the decision is the wrong one. Easy pitch and catch for Ultimus. Picks up six. It's going to bring up second and four with the ball now at the 43-yard line. Yeah, Ayersville showing zero coverage. Watch for Antler to go vertical here. Ultimus under pressure. Fires this one. Has a man middle of the field. He's going to break free. It's Lee Steed, he's going to be brought down inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, you knew as soon as he saw zero coverage. That means, oh, man, no safety in the middle of the field. They showed it too early. Antwerp was able to take advantage of it. That's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Reed Lee Steed out of the backfield, barely gets it off. He's going to beat Hannenkraft. Look at the distance. 
got to get pressure. You hit the quarterback, but Carson Altimus, Mr. Cool, delivers a big throw. He'll mark him down at the 15-yard line. So quickly, Antwerp into Ayersville territory. Here's the option pitch. Least he turned in the corner, looking for the pylon, and it looks like he's going to be just shy of the goal line. We're going to take a look at it. It's going to be open option, speed option to the right. We're going to get a good hit on Ultimus to force the pitch, but released. He's got a little shiftiness to him, gets to the sideline. The dive almost gets in. Going to be sitting pretty, though. Looks like there's a man down, though, for Ayersville. It's going to stop action. Yeah, it's going to be first and goal from the two, and it looks like on that uh, home sideline. Ayersville player down, so with the injured player, we'll take a quick time out here early on. Antwerp threatening to score. So early on here, and an injured player for Ayersville, just a minute and change into this one, and a big Oh, I want to say broken coverage. You don't know broken coverage. Good to see their player getting up. Now trying to get a number who is down. I believe that is, that is Wolfram, yeah, 15. Wolfram looks like he's going to be okay. Yeah, if he's unable to go, big blow to their defense, but uh, able to. Uh, you see him pointing to his, his front number. So there's something wrong with his front number right there. So Is that what it is? <laughs> pierced, pierced by the one, <laughs> comes off. and. You got to keep an eye on Ultimus here. He's got 10 touchdowns on the ground already this year. Pistol set. First and goal, Antwerp from the two. Give to Leasty, and it looks like he's going to get stacked up after a minimal gain. That's going to be Noah Bodie, who's going to knife right through, comes through the A-gap, blows up Leasty in a big way. Boy, if Earsville can get a stop here, Hold Antwerp to either four and out or a field goal attempt. Be huge for this Ayersville defense. Backs and receivers all look over to the sideline for Antwerp. They get the call. What a job Jason Hale's done his fourth year, 18 and 21, trying to turn around this Antwerp program. He's got some great help, former head coach and Drew Aldmiss, now the AD. Here's Carson keeping it right up the middle. He's going to get in. <laughs> And the Archers are going to have the early score. That's easy. They bring Lisi in motion to clear out the box. See big number 61, Kendrick Robinson with the pancake. Mm, I'm hungry. Give me some pancakes, Mr. Robinson says. Easy to score a touchdown when you follow the big fella in. Another touchdown for Ultimus. This Antwerp offense, boy, we heard all about them. They're impressive early. That was quick. And now Parker, I'm sorry, Moore is going to do the holding. Ty Jackson As Ty Jackson, Jackson, a freshman, looks like a left-footed kicker on to attempt the extra point. As our official is holding a play. Well, we had a personal foul. I think that might be assessed on the kickoff. Yeah, they'll be kicking off from around the 50-yard line. If your special teams guy always goes to the head coach after it and says, onside, you want to go onside? <laughs> Hey, your offense is your best defense, right? Sure is. The extra point and it's going to be blocked. That one's going to end up right in the chest. And you got to like that, just hold it up for good measure. So the extra point is blocked. It's 6 nothing here early on, Antwerp in front. Take your pick on who got the block. That thing was kicked so low. I think the offensive line might have even got a part of that one. Never had a chance. It was only about three feet off the ground. Looked like me on the tee box. An impressive opening drive for the Antwerp Archers. It ends up with the short touchdown run from Carson Altimus. The extra point is blocked, so 6 nothing here, just a couple minutes into this one. Now yeah, it was the big vertical throw to Leasty, and uh, it covers zero by Ayersville, and it's okay to go cover zero, but you can't show it that early where you allow the offense to go ahead and check and go vertical right away. There's Andrew Mickey on the sideline right there. What a job he has done. We saw him as an assistant coach for years at places like Fairview, and what a great job he did there as mm -hmm. a defensive coordinator. Just knew it was going to be a matter of time before he had got a head coaching job, and he was going to be a good one once he got it. 
So they had the ball teed up, then they realized they had the penalty, so they're going to move 15 yards. Antwerp is going to kick from the Ayersville 45. Looks like Brewer will do the uh, kicking here. Yeah, Brewer kicks off, and uh, Kendrick Robinson is the backup guy also. Saw him kick at practice. <laughs> Impressive stuff. You don't see 6'6", 330 guys kicking the ball often, but believe fun. might have tried Robinson as the punter as well. See what happens here. It was going to hit one of the up men as McGuire will end up going backwards a couple of yards. Well, how good is Weston McGuire's hands? Caught a cannonball out of the air <laughs> right at him. Usually that explodes off the front guy's chest and the kick team receive on a, on a surprise and they get the ball back. But Weston McGuire might be the most impressive things we see all night long. <laughs> it looked like that was the play design. McGuire's quick hands will hold on to it, so the Pilots will have their initial possession of the night begin at their own 30-yard line. Yeah, Schlachter and Brewer down here, man and man. Come out three receivers set here. Arizona's got man coverage to the top side as well. Uh, taking a look at what Antwerp gives them, then changing a the play as they look to the sideline. I'll send a man in motion. Howenstein in a shotgun. Looks to throw. He's going to fire. That one's going to be incomplete. Tended for Abe Delano, just unable to hang on to it. Yeah, a lot of height on the right-hand side. Going to use Schlachter to clear it out and then run the slant underneath it. And you think Abe was going to wish he had that one back. Hit him right in the hands. And Delano had a couple of huge catches a week ago. That one just kind of squirts out right before contact. 6-0 in our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard sponsor for our game tonight. We proudly invest in our community and tonight's broadcast. Second down, trying to run. Nice job, a little start stop. Owen Burner looking for some running room to get a couple of yards. Yeah, very active linebackers for this Antwerp group. Reed, Reed Leasty, oh, he flew up there, the took Pirates down Burner. And if you're going to stop this Ayersville team, boy, job number one is stopping Owen Burner, right? That dude can run 792 total yards to lead the GMC. The third and six coming up from the 34. Early in this game, but you feel as if Ayersville's got to get a first down here. It feels that way. Also feels cold, so I don't know which one's which. And man coverage. Howenstein looking to throw once again. This ball's going to be tipped nearly. Intercepted, falls incomplete. Caden Winslow, number 13 for Antwerp, is the nearest one to it. We'll see, it looked like 62. Yeah, it was 82, got his hands up. Remember, you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. That's Cohen Heitzman that deflects it and gets it to the ground. Good coaching right there. A lot of defensive linemen just try to run at the quarterback for getting a hand up. Left hand, go to the right arm is what you teach. Good fundamentals right there by Antwerp. Quick three and out. And an over end punt will take a big Ayersville bounce and roll. And it's going to be touched and downed at about the 23 yard line. Yeah, you wonder why Brewer didn't kind of move over to his left. He's, he's kind of looking to the sideline like, yeah, I should have got that one. Even if you fair catch it, it saves your team about 12 yards. And that hidden yardage can be big. I mean, you. All offensive coordinators want to start the ball outside the 30. You know, inside the 30, and then it changes kind of what your play call philosophy is. Well, the last time that really didn't affect Antwerp all that much. No, Jason Hale, who calls the plays, the head coach, also the offensive coordinator, he doesn't seem to be affected by any situation with this offense. Also not affected by the weather as the rest of us are. Quick throw, first down. That one's going to go through the hands of its intended target. In uh, Parker Moore, incomplete. Target and Parker Moore just one sails a little bit high. He missed times his jump. Down. And probably a good thing that he missed it is he was going to get thumped when he caught it. That Ayersville secondary read the scream really well. Ray Wolfram came fly flying up. Second and 10 coming up here for the Archers. Altimus has it back with him. In the shotgun, gets the snap. All sorts of time. He's going to look. He's going to come near sideline, and that one's going to be just overthrown. Here's well, very fortunate that that one is off mark because it was going to be another big play 
Coverage on the Winslow. By 12, Lucas Boy, how many times you heard that in football history? Right? Winslow open on a pass. <laughs> the great Kellen Winslow from the San Diego Chargers. Winslow was all by himself. Just the throw went to the sideline. So very quickly, it's third down coming up here. Oh, the hand warmer come loose. Yeah, still loose. He's just going to play with it. <laughs> He's, just... He's going. We'll, we'll worry about that in the next stoppage. Good throw on the money. Close, and it looks like we'll have enough for first down as he hits Landon Brewer. Yeah, going one spot and one spot only. You saw him just eyeing up Brewer. Just going to go past the sticks and turn. As a secondary member, you got to know the situation. Don't let your receiver get to the spot and turn. Easy. Easy fundamental throw right there by Ultimus to get it done. A good conversion on third down. First and 10, Ultimus looking to throw once again. Fires downfield, he's got Brewer. And that one comes loose last minute, incomplete. Now what a battle this is. Watch Fishpaw, he's gonna have one-on-one -on -one with Brewer as it's a vertical route and the cover three principle. Brewer's got it. Look at the little creative separation by Brewer. Almost has it, but Fishpaw uses that left hand the knock it free and then lets everybody know, uh-uh, not in my neighborhood. Well, second down coming up for the Archers. Do you see the little subtle push and by Brewer to get creative separation there? That like creative blocking? <laughs> as long as they don't call it. That's right. Remember Michael Irvin, how bad he was with the Cowboys doing that? A little pressure coming up the middle here. Antwerp's gonna run right through it, Leasty. Good gain on second down. Going to be inside zone. Kendrick Robinson inside, pushing. Melissa McGuire is going to come make the tackle along with Delano. Big third down. Gain of five, so third and five coming up here. Here's what it looked like they're going to do it again. Now they'll back out of the pressure a little bit. Yeah, given a drop eight look, just going to rush three. Going for the home run ball once again. Going to Brewer. Trying to come up with a one-handed catch. Incomplete. Antwerp fans wanted a flag for pass interference, but they're not going to get one. Oh, there's a lot of physicality on the outside. We said take shots, rope some points with Brewer. Ultimus, he knows he's going one-on-one -on -one with his skilled receiver. And you see the both of them just battle away in the right hand of Fishpaw the right spot, knocked that away. And I tell you what, buddy, being in the stands, everybody for Antwerp, they want pass interference. Instead, they're gonna settle for a fourth and five. And what do the archers do from their own 40 yard line? Up six, nothing here. Uh, Harrisville thinks they're punting the football, but Antwerp, yep, they're gonna drop back. Now keep an eye, Brewer is the punter. Throws left-handed. Well, what a stop for the Ayersville defense. Getting off the field here, get the ball back to their offense, see if they can settle in. Brewer surveys. Need to let everyone come in. Nice punt. One hits the 25. Doesn't get the roll that Ayersville got. Still pretty good field position. Uh, there's going to be a flag behind the play. Delano, as soon as Brewer punted and he turned into a cover man, he started blocking him. But the officials are going to say that was excessive. And they're going to call running into the kicker, it looks like. At least that was the early indication. He yeah, gave the right foot kick towards the sideline. The and white hat did. And again, we're sitting in the visitor side, so we're going to see a lot of the backs of the officials tonight. And now he's going to come over and have a long conversation with Ayersville. I, I get it if it was going to be excessive because he was blocking him and blocking him and blocking him. But if they're going to say it was running into the kicker, yeah, see, hey, Andrew Mickey, that's what he's saying also. This is really, really a late call for running into the kicker. And unfortunately for Ayersville, it looks like it'll give a first down to Antwerp. So it's a five yard walk off. They're going to move the stick. So big penalty. <laughs> what, what were you saying in the. Uh, Yellow flags are bad, very, very bad. Yeah, there's yeah, a costly coach, one there. Yeah, Coach Mickey is rightfully yeah, upset. Not sure about that call. A big break for Antwerp on the running into the kicker call. They'll go once again, first down. Here's Ultimus on the keeper. And we'll explain a little bit about some of the uh, RPOs they've got. And he's going to go off for a big run. 
pick up about 15. As an old option guy, love to see it. He's gonna put the ball inside the belly of Leasty, wait for the defense to collapse and then pull, and then get vertical right away. Now, one thing I have noticed, every time they've motioned the two backs in the backfield, it's been run you know, when I was at practice and so far in this game. So keep an eye on that if you're the Ayersville defense. Miles has got some drawings he'll uh, show everyone a little bit later in our broadcast. Not in Crayola this week. Oh, well, that's good. We're moving up. We got you a bigger budget. Option will come the uh, opposite way here to our side. And a good run for Ultimus on first down. Yeah, open option to the left-hand side. No Going to be picking on the outside man. Nobody shows, so you just keep the ball and go. Get some positive yardage. Good hustle to get down the tackle. That's Brady Clark coming from his left tackle spot to get the tackle on the quarterback. A gain of seven is going to bring up second and three. Oh, how big was that penalty now? Yo, if they deposit this in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Getting to the halfway point of this opening quarter. Picturesque night. Run straight ahead. Here's Leasty, and that looks like it's going to be close to a first down. Yeah, this Antwerp offensive line, other than Robinson, the not the, the biggest Archer. guys on the tackle, but they are moving guys extremely well and getting just enough of guys, right? You don't have to. When you got Ultimus and Leasty attacking the last scrimmage, you don't have to hold blocks forever. You mm -hmm. just got to get in front of guys. Those guys will beat the linebackers one on one. Third and uh, about a yard coming up here. Yeah, man to man to the top side, inside leverage if they want it. And you see Ayersville changing it at the last second, still inside leverage. Pistol look with a back behind Ultimus. Flat foot's going to throw for the corner of the end zone. And that one is going to be knocked away incomplete. Flipping the sides, going Brewer to that near oh, sideline. Now, well, third nice. time they've tried to go vertical to Brewer. And they've come up empty Covered each the time. Number 15, Ray Wolfram. Watch Wolfram, great job. Turns into the receiver, turns, gets the eyes on the ball, plays through the hands. That is defensive back play 101. Nice job. Big fourth down. Amper to keep their offense on the field from the Ayersville 29. Needed a yard, and they'll get a couple more than that. Yeah. And it's going to be enough for a first down as Ultimus will keep it on the ground. <laughs> you see, Ultimus, he gets the first down, and it's kind of like, all right, I'll go down now so we can play some more offense. Gets the first down, gets tackled down by Schlachter, who is a guy that last week absolutely dominated the first half against Tenora, but so far in this game, Ayersville's elected to put him in coverage. I think he's better served at the line of scrimmage for this pilot defense. So another first down for Antwerp now at the Ayersville 25. Middle of the field's empty. And flag is going to come in here. He'll fire middle of the field. That one's going to be caught. Parker Moore will have this one, but we got to see what the penalty flag is. Yeah, I think this is going to come back. Turned up too early on the motion. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, Weston McGuire almost gets to him, but that's twice now that they've almost gotten to Carson Ultimus. But that quick release of Mr. Cool makes another completion. But yeah, that's exactly what the call is. Turned up too early, going to cost Antwerp some yardage. Brings up first and 15. So redo first down, now first and 15. Ayersville has shown zero coverage twice, and they've been beat twice on it. You might want to not use that one anymore. Is that how that works? <laughs> You go in the locker room at halftime, go, fellas, what's what's going on here? Why isn't this working? And I got Hounstein back at free safety. Fake tool, now they'll give to the cutter, middle of the field, working his way for the end zone, and Fuller's gonna get in for the score. That's nothing more than an RPO. Linebackers fly up on inside fake, go ahead and hit where they were at. That is easy. Especially when you got a quarterback as cool as Carson Altimus and Cam Fuller. Well, he just blows by everybody with the ball in his hands. A lot of weapons on this Antwerp offense. A couple of touchdowns for the Archers, and they're not going to chase points, so they'll elect to kick. Number 12, Ty Jackson. How many times you see here, you see him go for two. Oh, we missed the first one. we got to make it up. And you spend the night chasing points. Jackson... Better job uh, this time, but we have a flag at the end of it. 
So no signal yet. Uh, they... Official picked it up and then waved it towards the white hat. So I don't know if he's waving it off. Mind. Still no signal whether or not we saw one from Coach Hale. I don't know if we saw a signal whether or not the kick was actually good. And now the official is going to come over and talk. Oh, what do we got going on here? Yeah, hopefully we get a signal. Well, it looks like there's going to be no penalty, partner. They're just walking away. So he did pick it up and wave it up. All right, folks, here's the run pass option. See the X that is circled? That's a linebacker. When he attacks the line of scrimmage, thinking it's going to be run, Ultimus will pull it, and he'll hit the inside slot, who's going to run to the vacated spot of the linebacker, and that was Cam Fuller for an easy five-yard catch and pass and then run by everybody for a touchdown. It puts the defense in the bind. It's tough to play linebacker against the RPO. Your drawings are getting better. You even added hash marks and yard markers. and well, My fiance bought me Sharpies, so oh, okay. I was using those. And uh, Except they're on the 25. You had that from the 20, <laughs> so attention to detail. That's, so anytime someone says, what's that? an RPO, it means run pass option, mm -hmm. right? And then you're just picking on the linebacker. Whatever he does is wrong. So while Miles explained all that, we did get the signal that the extra point was good. So as you see in our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard, now 13-0. And there was a walk-off, so the penalty was something on Ayersville. Not exactly sure what it was. Yeah, we didn't get a signal. But once again, Antwerp will be kicking off on the Ayersville side of the field at the 45. The only thing I did see is the white hat raised his two arms to the sideline. So I think maybe someone was hitting the center, the snapper. You're not allowed to hit the snapper anymore. Pooch kick fielded inside the 10 yard line. And we're trying to get a return. That's Cyrus Gale. Gale Force wins when he's running down on kickoff. Cyrus, the leading tackler on this Antwerp team. And you put him on kickoff because he loves to go hit people and watch him in a big way just engulf Owen Burner. Yeah, Burner trying to break free. And it will be. Ayersville football, I think about their own 23-yard line. So four and a half minutes to go, still in our opening quarter. Again, 13-0 now the score in our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Now, Antwerp's got to do something here. You got the feeling that it's going to take a lot of points to win this football game tonight. It's a run straight ahead now, cutting up field is Burner. He's going to have the first down a lot more as he gets to the sideline. In Antwerp territory, oh, no hesitation. Boy. Nice cutback, gets a block, and finally he's going to be brought down at about the 26-yard line. Yeah, seven brings seven down, but not before. It's a huge run. Look at the lateral quickness of Owen Burner, then the burst to get to the sideline and outruns everybody in a white jersey. And the creativity, look at that. Put on the brakes, let him fly right by. Comes all the way back to the right, but unfortunately for him, Carson Ultimus takes him to the ground. But you needed a big play in a worse way. Ayersville, they got one. 51 yards on the run. And just like that, Ayersville set up in Antwerp territory. There's Howenstein straight ahead. He's got a good gain on first down. Now it's kind of like hitting in baseball, right? Someone makes a big play, someone else does. Howenstein gets himself going forward. And finally, this Ayersville offense has something cooking. And he'll pick up 12. It's another first down. Couple of plays, and Ayersville has reached the Antwerp 14-yard line. Now keep in mind, this is an Antwerp team that's only given up 12 points all year round in the first half. And press coverage down at the end. Handoff once again, going back to Burner, and it's going to take about four white jerseys to bring him down. Oh, I thought he could have got to the end. He's going to be one-on-one -on -one with Cam Fuller. I think if he runs to the sideline, he can beat Fuller, but he cuts back in, allows Fuller to get the tackle. Derek Hines helps out as well. Gain of five, second and five from the nine. Good shot at the playground on the opposite side of the field as well. I'm not going to push you on the swings after the game again, oh, Randy. Oh, man. Not doing it. I was looking forward to that. 
Allenstein, he's going to keep this one going left side, and he's going to be brought down from behind. Yeah, it's quarterback run all the way. Allenstein's going to keep it. He's going to get a, a good block by Hannenkrath. But all of a sudden, a line of scrimmage is in the positive column for this Ayersville offense. Cyrus Gale with the uh, stop. It is now calling this third and short. Looks like the down box from where we stand actually past the yard markers. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they're not measuring it. So we've got the clock stopped now, 2.27 to go in the quarter here. If it's not a first down, it's about as close as you can humanly get without it being a first down. And now no, we're gonna, the official uh, did are, signal it. Yep, so we're taking the sticks away. So first and goal. Marking this scoreboard says three yard line. We'll go with that. Keep your eye on Weston McGuire, number nine, being the lead blocker. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Ayers. And Howenstein's in, and he'll get the score. Yeah, Howenstein's just going to fo follow Weston McGuire and then Burner over that left hand side. And there's nobody in a white jersey that shows up until late. He just kind of puts his foot in the ground, says, whoop, I'm going to go the other way. Dives in, gets this Ayersville team on the scoreboard, makes this a game as it looked like Antwerp had a chance to run away with this. Yeah, big score for the Pilots. And as we saw them do a week ago, they're going to go for two. Howenstein looks like same play, trying to stretch this out, looking for the corner, and he'll get the two-point conversion. Howenstein gets it again, fouls all his backs over to left-hand side. Student body to the left. Same two-point type of setup that they used a week ago against Tenora. You can keep running it as long as you keep executing it. The big score for Ayersville. They answer one of the Antwerp touchdowns, and we'll take a timeout here late in our opening quarter. It's 13-8 here at Craig McCord Field. I want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Ayersville and Antwerp is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio, skilled objective and caring financial planners. What a big touchdown scored by Ayersville. See, Andrew Mickey looks a little happier. Yeah, he's not as fiery right now, right? Early in the game, it looked like you could have him chew on some nails and he'll spit him out. But he, he is definitely an intense fella. Reminds me of a, a young Bill Cower. Remember Bill Cower at the Steelers back in the day? That kind of a fiery guy. <laughs> Kickoff fielded at about the 20 yard line. As one of his own men almost blocked into him. Now we got a late flag on the hit coming in. Yeah, Kate Hannenkraft, he came flying Kate down on the kickoff. Off You're a special teams lover. You're going to love to see this. Watch number 70 show up right away, beats his block, and then makes the tackle on the kickoff. Hannenkraft had a huge block early in that drive on offense when he pulled. He is a guy that likes to hit, as you saw right there. Now caucus again on the penalty. Yeah, it's going to be a hold against Antwerp, I believe. Whoever is blocking Hannenkraft had a tough time doing it, and they held on to him. Yeah, there it is, the hold. Penalty is for holding against Antwerp. So the archers will be moved back 10 yards. And again, came really late, so 10 yards the basically from the end of the return. This is that dangerous formation that Antwerp has showed. Trips to, to the side and then one-on-one -on, -one on the other side with Brewer. And they are going to bring the safety up. Now they're going to bounce into like a two-shell look now. So it's going to be tough to hit a vertical against Brewer. Now they're going to roll up late. Some chess match stuff going on. Brewer looking to throw. Now he's under pressure. He's going to have to keep it. He's going to run right into the pressure. I think it's going to be Abe Delano. He's going to get the Ultimus. Looked like Ultimus didn't understand what the coverage was. Tries to throw the hitch route, but he can't because Schlachter's big paws were in front of him. And Delano is going to clean it up. 
Boy, how big was that run now by Owen Berner that breaks things loose for offensively? Now there's momentum on the Ayersville side. Second and long for Antwerp as they're backed up a little deeper. And this one's going to be batted down back into the end zone. And there's Schlachter getting involved. Yeah, remember Schlachter started the game out in coverage, right? He had a six foot six frame playing coverage. Get him back on a line of scrimmage where he can make plays, right? It is tough to throw over eight foot tall long arms. As you saw the last two plays, it is harassing this Antwerp offense. You might be exaggerating at eight foot tall, but not by much. Look, there was a cat in a tree earlier, and he just reached up and grabbed it out. Third and 19, and now we're going to have another penalty. Uh, going to be offsides. Someone uh, line up in the neutral zone. Being a little too eager, you're fired up, making play after play. You want to get there right away. Third down and long. This is a huge Tuttle screen call down for Antwerp. Be on the alert if you're Ayersville. Third and 19 turns into third and 14. Playing coverage, gonna drop about eight. Ultimus looking to throw. He's trying the middle of the field. That one's gonna be incomplete. Legs got tangled up between Brewer and one of the defensive backs. And Brewer's in like triple coverage. Yeah, see a couple of men down here if you take gonna, a look. You're gonna see it. Inside fake doesn't fool anybody because it's third and long. They're gonna try to hit Brewer on a post. Middle of the field. And the Antwerp people don't want to hear it, but it's actually a good call. It was incidental contact. Feet just got tied up. Not sure it would have been caught anyhow, but Brewer is down on the ground. You've ever been hit in the shin, especially on a cold night. Ouch. That's got a smart. As Wolfram, we're taking a look at the overhead look here, Miles. We'll see three dark jerseys kind of surround Brewer, and Wolfram yeah, just got tangled up. Yeah, Hannenkrath was there as, or not Hannenkrath, but uh, Hallenstein was there as well. Good thing Brewer's up, gonna get that grass out of his helmet. Looks like he's gonna be just fine walking that off, but bad news for Antwerp, you're fourth and forever inside uh, your own 10. Well, outside the, the 10, about the 12, I guess. Yeah. About the, yeah. I think the uh, Antwerp basketball fans also with a uh, sigh of relief there. Head think, coach Doug Bilden yeah, wants to see. I think, I think Bills is like, get up, get up, get up. The Archer punt. I think if, if he didn't get up, he's like, can we get a fifth year for Landers? <laughs> Playing college ball that important. Yeah, right. Well, Bear Bryant always said when mom calls, you go home. So mama Antwerp calls, go home. Will the, uh, will the sheriff have to get involved in that one? I could see the sheriff showing up and saying, oh, we got to get some things straight. Somebody had to tell Brewer, you got to go punt now. <laughs> Does he just leave the grass in? Or is he, oh, now he's trying to take care of it. So Brewer, again, kind of wait, see what the pressure brings. Short kick, fielded at the 40, but a great job on the return coverage. Now another late flag coming in here. Has a real late flag coming in. Fuller comes in, makes the tackle on Fishball. We'll see if it's a horse collar. Well, just kind of grabs his arm, swings him around, do -si do And then you see the flag come in real late. You know, maybe it was a face mask. Fishball got up grabbing his face mask. But they're going to. Now this is on Ayersville. Yeah, they're going to walk it off against Ayersville. So I don't know. An illegal block. Illegal block in the back or just illegal block, but at any rate, hey, it's remember, back up. You remember that one play we had tonight where we didn't have a flag? <laughs> that was fun. So that moves Ayersville back to their own side of the field. It is the 49 yard line. So a minute 12 to go in our opening quarter in a game that might go as the longest first quarter for Miles and Randy in their history. Rolling up Reed Leasty to the outside, ready for that outside run. A little RPO action out of Ayersville. As Howenstein will pull it out of the bread basket of Burner. He'll go straight ahead. Pick up about three as they get back into Antwerp territory. You see how Antwerp is so conscious of that jet sweep or the outside run of this Ayersville team. They flew up right away. Howenstein going to keep it. 
It's really the best two run plays of Ayersville, right? The quarterback yep. off of the jet sweep. Jet sweep establishes it. Boy, there's a lot of size on the outside of this Twins formation with Schlachter and Delano. It's a run. They'll go with Burner, and he's not going to have a lot. Did fall oh, forward, so it looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, and instead it ends up being a gain of about three. And Weston McGuire is going to lead the way. He's going to cut right there, avoids the first tackle, spins. All good running backs seemingly get yardage when they shouldn't. Got three yards there when he should have been held to zero. Third and about four. I think it'll be the end of the quarter. I don't think they're going to run a play, and I bet you anything, buddy, this is going to be four down territory if they don't get it on third down here. So big third down will be coming up, and it'll come as we start our second quarter right after this. Thirteen eight. As we head to quarter number two, the uh, Ayersville student section trying to get fired up. You know what I'm happy to see there? Nobody in shorts. Usually high school kids on a cold night, like there's a, always a couple kids in shorts. They're the ones who aren't in class on Monday because they're sick as well. How and Steen again, ball's, ball's gonna loose. come loose! And it's gonna be Antwerp football. Derek Hines, number 56, will be the one that falls on top of it. Hines, 56, big play. And we know Howenstein loves contact, playing quarterback. He's like a fullback. Boom, big hit right there. Knocked it free. That was going to be Ty Jackson, the kicker, with a big play. Said kickers aren't. See, kickers do have value. <laughs> Big turnover gives Antwerp the football at their own 40-yard line, one play into our second quarter. Now here's Aldemis with a keeper and a little chase going on here. Aldemis able to turn up field, and he's going to get in Ayersville territory before being run out of bounds. Yeah, not only is Aldemis quick, but he's got some speed as well. He's going to get Schlachter to bite in a hurry on Leasty. And Schlachter said, where did he go? Where did he go? Where'd who go? All of a sudden, another big play. Turn of events, fumbled and big play. Antwerp cooking again. 37 yards on the run. It's a first down from the 27 yard line. And Ayersville's gonna read that one, nowhere to go for Reed Leasty. Yeah, Leasty, it's gonna be eaten up by Delano. Well, one thing you gotta do if you're gonna stop that quarterback option is take away the first phase, right? Destroy the inside run game so you can just focus on the quarterback running. Loss of two, second and 12, now back at the 29 yard line. Was looking back to the sideline. Seen him do this a couple of times. Try to hurry up, try to draw him, and then actually get the play. The inside slot is uncovered. Throw's going to go that way. Here's Parker Moore trying to put together a fake, but then Weston McGuire helped clean up. He's going to bring up third and somewhat manageable here. Hey, Ayersville so worried about Brewer outside. They rolled their coverage two on one on him, left it all by himself. So all Parker Moore has to do is just run five yards and turn, nobody on him. Quarterback delivers a strike. Third and six from the 23. It's Coach Hale. Have our uh, trivia question involving Coach here in just a few moments as well. Third down run, you do that knowing that it's four down territory, I would imagine. I'm gonna pick it on the outside linebackers. Last man on the line of scrimmage. If he bites down in a hard, hard uh, way to least it, quarterback's gonna pull it. Sometimes you can play it in between, make the quarterback kind of hedge his thought process. It's fourth and three from the 20. It looked like Aldemus was gonna get under center and Ayersville a little out of sorts, so they'll take a timeout. So with a stoppage, that'll give us the opportunity to give you our trivia question today. 
So with the Antwerp Archers at 7-0, it guarantees that they are going to have a winning season. This comes uh, after going 9-3 a year ago, which I believe means back-to-back, -back, and then the famous line is, third one is a streak, right? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. That's not, we'll get Earl to that, Weaver, I believe. right? Earl Weaver said that. When was the last time that the Archers had back-to-back -back winning football seasons? Mm, you got to go way back, um, not, 90s, early 2000s maybe, mid-2000s, I'm going to guess. Because they had a really dry spell for a while. They, they almost, did. They didn't even play varsity they football played, for a they while. They had the 2015 they were without. They had a, a football coach they brought in from Fort Wayne. Was here five games, and then Drew Ultimus, who is uh, hovering about 10 feet above us in the coach's box, what, what we'll graciously call a coach's box. <laughs> If you don't like heights, don't go in that thing. <laughs> Ricky returns, so uh, fourth down. Let's get it out to Parker Moore, trying to settle a room for him down the sideline into the end zone. He'll get the Archer touchdown, but we have a flag. Uh, you're going to get a hold on the outside. There's a flag on the play. See if we can pick it up. Just a bubble screen to the inside. Parker Moore. It's going to be an outside. Won't be the inside block, but whoever was blocking towards the sideline, yeah, that's going to be the call. Like illegal block in the back because I think someone kind of turned when the pass was thrown. The rule is that if the guy turns, the guy turn. Wow, look at almost a deflected pass again. If the guy turns while you're blocking him, it's not a block in the back. But if you release and then re-engage and hit him in the back, then it is. So we'll do fourth down again. Now it looks like fourth and about nine. Back this up about the 26, 27 yard line. Looks like man coverage with free safety help. Howenstein at about 10 yards. Ultimus looking to throw. This one's going to be deflected again. Still going to be caught. As Brewers able to come back to the football. Uh, this this going to be a first down. This is sensational stuff. You're not going to see a better catch in high school football this year. He's falling down on the back shoulder throw. Still has the wherewithal to come up with it. Oh, big players. You make big time plays. Oh, big play. Brewer comes up again. A big gain of about 14, and it's first and 10 from the 13 yard line. Yeah, how about the throw by Ultimus, though? Just put it right in the spot on back shoulder, fourth and nine, no big deal. There's a lot of Drew Gallahue in him. You kind of watch the way he throws, kind of stands, has another man middle of the field. Big collision there is this one hauled in by Moore again, not uh, for a lot of yardage there. Uh, Ray Wolfram, he's come to play today. Knows he's got to be physical on the short passes. He delivers a hump, a thump on Parker Moore. Give him about three, so we'll call it second and seven from the 10 yard line. So Antwerp can still get one more first down inside the five. So the fake, a little jump pass. That one's going to be incomplete. Had the man cutting in front of him in Fuller, but couldn't hang on. That's an RPO. They're going to pull Gale from his right guard spot. Going to pull it out at least he's belly at the last second. Ultimus almost completes it to the vacated area. Shades of Tim Tebow with the jump pass. Stops clock, so late 22 to go before halftime. 13-8 in our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. And I believe Antwerp wants to talk about Time this. Out, right, Coach Hale calls timeout. I think he had each receiver play four different spots that time as he was changing a formation. Realized that the play clock was running down a little bit too low, so called timeout. A good look of Coach uh, Mickey and Chuck Martinez, the defensive coordinator, trying to get the Pilots ready to go. Pilots have hugged, hung tight so far in this football game. Could have folded a couple times. Could have. But to see if uh, Antwerp can really cash in after that turnover to start this possession by Howenstein. Looked like Ayersville was going to go and take the lead, and all of a sudden, ball's on the ground. It's a big third down coming up here for Antwerp deep in Ayersville territory, trying to add points to that Ayers or Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Again, Antwerp Exchange Bank is the scoreboard sponsor 
for our game tonight. We proudly invest in our community and in tonight's broadcast. Don't forget the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN App Store or Android Play Store. Third and seven from the 10 yard line. Antwerp set on offense. Still look over to the sideline. Make sure there's no changes. Long option pitch. Leasty looking for the corner, trying to cut up field. And he's going to get out of bounds. And we'll see where they mark him at here. Now it's a tough ask for Hollenstein because they're going to run a speed option. Just go off a of Schlachter, and there's no one else out there in the flat because they ran the receiver man coverage off the corner. Hollenstein has to fly up from his free safety spot. It's a lot of ground to cover. Fourth and short. We'll call it about a yard. And on the scoreboard, you see there are two. Not quite two yards to gain. Ultimus under center, and they might have gotten Ayersville to jump. Yeah, Weston McGuire is jumping up and down. He was creeping because he knows quarterback goes under center. It's mostly going to be a quarterback sneak. But it's amazing, partner, how week in, week out, Hut, Hut gets them to jump each time. So big, costly penalty for Ayersville. Second time we've said that tonight. And it is now first and goal from about the two and a half yard line. Ultimus will drop back into the shotgun once again. Keep it himself, he's gonna run into his own man and that's gonna allow the Ayersville defense to gang up on him. Carson Ultimus brought down. This is where the Ayersville defense is at its best when they let their outside linebackers play on the line of scrimmage because the physicality Goes to their advantage, great play, taking the quarterback down. That's Ethan Cordaway that got there first. Second time, Cordaway's got in the backfield, made a big play for this Ayersville team tonight. Loss of about three, sets up second and goal from the five. Ultimus might be changing the play up here. Roll, fires. That one broken up, nearly intercepted. Well, again, Ray Wolfram's made a big play. Now Wolfram, nobody told him that he was supposed to be scared of Brewer on the outside. He has accepted the challenge in a big way. Bats that one down, second time tonight. He's used that right hand to knock it away from Brewer. Another step, he might have had six and smooth sailing in front of him for a touchdown. It is now third and goal, the ball just outside the five yard line. Take the handoff. Now looking to run. He's got a man open after scrambling around, and Brewer's got the touchdown. I don't know how there's an illegal man downfield, but if there's not, that's a disciplined offensive line on this RPO. Look, fakes the inside. Nobody's there, and then he's just going to use his magic feet. Mr. Cool always collected. Carson Ultimus, a magician, finds big play Brewer again. Now 19-8, and this time Antwerp will go for two. How about the discipline at offensive line? Not going up yeah, field not on the RPO. Yeah, absolutely. How many times we've seen that down through the years? Yeah, checking things again, taking a look at what Ayersville presents. Trying to get to the corner, what a catch on the two point conversion. Boy, how about the hands of Brewer? Two sensational catches on this drive. One on fourth and nine to convert the net time. Going low, 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 low. Brewer landed big time. A Brewer with a touchdown, the nice catch for two. Now 21 8 Antwerp will take a break here in WOSN.
21-8 in our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Antwerp with a lead over Ayersville. The Archers, another impressive drive. Ayersville again, as Miles had mentioned in his uh, State Bank checks of the game. A penalty, costly penalty. Antwerp able to take advantage here as we get near the halfway point, quarter number two. Yeah, yellow flags, they're very, very bad. And a week ago, that really cost them in that game against Tenora, which should have been a blowout, but their penalties kind of kept Tenora in it till late in the game when Howenstein picked that pass in the flat Back off and ran it back for a touchdown, but that was another costly penalty. Really gave free points after the turnover by Howenstein, gave free points to this Antwerp team. Now we see for the first time tonight, Antwerp actually has the kickoff from where they're supposed to kick off at the 40 yard line. See the official explaining it. <laughs> it's normally an X right here on the field and not uh, not over in the other spot. Yeah, Brewer's asking, why, why don't I get the sure kick from their 45? Are you sure I don't get the move up? Wait a minute, what's going on here? So Crazy thing about this football game is there's still 719 left in this half. We've had all kinds of things going on. Well, it comes in at an angle, now they'll break out. Short kick again, and that one will just be fielded and then downed near the 40-yard line. Yeah, smart play. Loden Clark, Loden Clark, the sophomore, the one of the backup receivers and DBs. That's why you put those guys with good hands in that second row. Pilots trying to match the score again. They'll start from their own 39. Long ways to go yet here, week eight of the high school football season, hard to believe. It's two weeks left of the regular season, then uh, another half a season on that road, I wanna say road to Columbus, road to the Hall of Fame. One of beautiful settings in the state playoffs, and now penalty and uh, timeout, excuse me, heard the whistle. Yeah, Andrew Mickey calls timeout. Didn't look like him and uh, Brandon Bainfelt, the offensive coordinator, and him didn't have things where they wanted it, so don't snap it when you're struggling offensively. Call the timeout. But you can't waste timeouts in the first half. It, it's always the rule, right? Because they don't go with you to the second half, so if you need to use one, go ahead and call it. Teams huddling here. So we mentioned again for Antwerp, they will get a home game with Paulding next Friday, and then a week 10 matchup at Edgerton right now. Should this score hold, would uh, turn out to be a fairly important football game. Important enough where I believe mm -hmm. our crew may head out there. Yeah, we have uh, Wasion traveling to Archbold next week. Always a great rivalry. You've seen, what, about 100 of those. It feels that yet. way. So after the timeout, Ayersville will run here on first down. Here's Burner. He's going to turn up field. Trying to run out of an arm tackle. He's going to need about three or four white jerseys to bring him down after a gain of about eight or nine. Now if we get another chance to look at this one, I want you to watch the quarterback, Howenstein, does a great job of carrying through his fake. Puts it in the belly burner, then acts like he has it. Most quarterbacks will stop, but no, he goes past the line of scrimmage. That holds those linebackers just a little bit longer, allows Burner to get outside. Does give him eight, second and two. Pilots quickly get to the line here. Burner a little cut back. He'll have first down as he bursts through the line. And he'll get inside the Antwerp 40 yard line. And go back at it again. Get to the line of scrimmage. Run Burner again. He is the hot hand. Follows the lead. Blocks on the outside. Brady Clark again opens up a hole for him. Gain of about 14 for Burner. And it's a first and 10 from the. 36, about 16 on the run, excuse me. It's Howenstein trying to stay low, didn't want anyone to know he still had the football, and he'll absorb a big hit. Now a little extracurricular activity, the couple linemen back at midfield. As Wenzel delivers a big hit. And where people are all upset, because they didn't like the fact that Ethan Cordaway Number 52 on the line of scrimmage for Ayersville just took his man 
and drove him about 12 yards and pancaked him. It's not a penalty, folks, if you can drive the man into the ground. In fact, offensive linemen, offensive coaches, they love that. That's right. They absolutely do. Yep. Play itself was a loss of a yard, second and 11, back at the 37. Here's will trying to run a little time off the clock. Fakes to Burner Hounstein straight ahead. He'll get to about the 30, the where the knee actually hit down at. As he did kind of skid Tackle to a stop. Uh, kind of puts the inside linebacker in a bind. Antwerp does it with the RPO. Ayersville does it with the inside fake or the give on the on the outside run. Hollenstein takes it. When the linebacker vacates on the sweep, go ahead and pull it out and go. Call it third and a long four. Nose of the football just outside the 30-yard line. Antwerp's given up two first-half touchdowns all year, threatening to give up a second here in the half against Ayersville, arguably probably the best team they've seen all year. As a little offensive battle continues as uh, Ethan Cordaway continues to uh, push his man downfield. And Zane Wolf gets involved on the tackle along with Mr. Robinson. Huge fourth down for Ayersville to stay in this football game. Fourth and two with the ball at the 28 yard line. Get that tight formation. Owenstein will use his blockers, plows ahead. And from our vantage point, looks like he's got enough for the first down. I was a little concerned for Ayersville at first when the side judge ran in on our side of the 30. I thought, oh, they're going to say he's short, or it looked like he really had it. But top side official, he was the one that spotted it. Clearly a first down. Moves the ball to the 24. Ayersville maybe trying to make this the final possession of the half. Fake the pop pass. Howenstein looking to throw. He's got all sorts of time. Looks for the end zone. Has the man open. And he stayed in bounds in the back of the end zone for the score. Pass is complete to number 36, Abe, Abe Delano. Delano. And we're going to take a look at this one again. A jet sweep fake. Boy, look at the time that Howenstein has. Great job by the offensive line. And then he just delivers a missile. All the way across, credit Abe Delano for not giving up on the play. Nobody near him. Huge play. Katie Bartador, easy score for Ayersville. And for staying in bounds. Now the two-point conversion is Howenstein trying to run and He's going to get in, and he'll get the two-point conversion. So 21-16 now on the Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Got to give Delano credit as well, staying in bounds. How tough was that? And not only one foot, but got two yeah, in. Yeah, would have been good in the pros, yeah, maybe. Well, did he have to catch all the way to the ground? <laughs> did he survive the catch to the ground? That's, That's right. the thing. Did he give it to the official without fumbling it? Like, there's all, we don't know. Like, well, in like, high school and college, all you need is the one foot down. NFL, mm -hmm. you got to get two and then, I don't know, complete a math and then, problem. And then a passport <laughs> and fill out a questionnaire. And, yeah, it's much easier in high school. Right. When you know what a catch is when you see it. Oh. Hey, Andrew Mickey, got to be excited. Bad thing is, though, 342 <laughs> left in a half. All, all because of the Detroit Lions. Yeah, it was Calvin Johnson against the Bears years ago, right? Yep. Didn't survive the catch. Of course, Jesse James, Steelers and Patriots years ago, too. That was a huge I remember one. that. Yeah, I, I, that's one that has stayed with me for some reason. So what a catch. We've had a couple of those plays here. Yeah, we'll have two timeouts left, 342. They do have a hurry-up style offense. If you see, they've got uh, plays on the wristband that they can go to. They want to go hurry up. 12 points allowed in the opening half for Antwerp all year. Two tonight. Now 16. Makes it 28. Still an impressive number. Good return. Ooh. Big hit. The 30-yard line. Oh, it's almost like Shark Week. When the shark comes out of the water and attacks. Brady Clark. Watch Caden. Brady Clark right there. The human forklift just lifts him off the ground. Hello. 
Winslow's been involved in a few of these plays on both sides tonight. Oh, that's one he doesn't want to be involved with. <laughs> that had to hurt. Brady Clark, show him your muscles flex after that one. Plenty of time for Antwerp, three and a half minutes. They got the football, their own 32. Holding on to a five point lead. First down runs Leasty. He'll get one, maybe two. That's Hanencraft gets in the backfield again. Number 70. Gonna make the play. And of course, Weston McGuire is virtually in on every single tackle. They are fired up. Be a yard, no. Ultimus kind of looked over at his bench with the uh, palms up. Like, what are we doing here, coach? That's the worst feeling you call a play and the quarterback still looks at you. What? <laughs> right. Now pressure. Ultimus, he's going to keep it. And he's going to be pushed backward and he's going to lose his forward progress. Flag is going to come out at the end of this. So stop by McGuire. And now we'll watch here because McGuire will wrap him up. And oh, Bodie almost has him right there. Weston McGuire is going to picture perfect tackle him right there and drive, but there's no whistle, right? Nobody blows the whistle. So Weston McGuire finishes the play, spins the quarterback to the ground, and they're going to say unnecessary roughness. Yeah, that's what the call is. There is the penalty. So another 15 yarder as the penalty numbers mount for Ayersville. Take a look at that at the half. And blow the whistle, right? Quarterbacks, he's all tied up. Yeah, I mean, he gave himself up. He did. The official, did all, all you got to do is can't, blow can't, the whistle so the play's over. Can't fall to the ground when you're uh, wrapped up. So 15-yard walk-off will move this to the 49-yard line. Yeah, it kind of changes the thought process now for Jason Hale, head coach of Antwerp, play caller. You can be a little more aggressive now with 248 left. Ultimus steps up, firing downfield, looking for Brewer, comes back to the football, and he's going to be brought down to the 15-yard line. Yeah, this is another flag down on the ground behind the play. We'll see what this is. This is double coverage in between. Brewer just splits them, goes up, high points the football. Big play, but this is going to come back because they're going to say it's a penalty against Antwerp. Yeah, a false start. As the line judge on the home sideline, which again is away from us, saw on that replay, kind of threw the flag. I shouldn't say kind of, did throw the flag. So someone, uh, one of the receivers on that end took off a step early, but it negates what would have been a big play down deep in Ayersville territory. Mm. Didn't see it. Now uh, they're saying number 65. We'll see if we can catch on the line of scrimmage. See anyone go early? Did not. Saw the official throw the flag, so it's wasn't, a first wasn't and 15. A, wasn't a receiver to his side either. That's a tough call. We got the Antwerp coaches right above us, and they didn't like the interpretation of that one either. Makes it first and 15, just over two to go in the half. Ultimus throws, middle of the field, has a man open. As Fuller will have this one. They'll get the penalty yardage back plus some as they'll get to the Ayersville 45. They see the jam down low on Brewer. It's because they're going to go high and low. Brewer under, uh, burner underneath one-on-one -on -one with safety help top. There's the pressure. And we're going quick. Throw was kind of thrown. The receiver wasn't ready. But what a catch by Winslow. I don't think it was intended for Winslow. I think they're trying to hit the inside slot. Just goes by too quick, and Winslow has the wherewithal to get his hands out and makes a catch. Moves it down to the Ayersville 25. Clock still running down to a minute and a half. By the time this ball will be snapped. Change coverage again. Now we'll throw the backward pass. Trying to get out of bounds was Fuller. He'll have the first down. Yeah, look at the athletic ability of Ultimus, right? Think he's going to keep it? Oh, no, at last second, he's going to throw it out there. Just an extension of the triple option. And you can get the ball in the hands of someone quick, like Camden Fuller, where there's no one around him. Boy, that is easy yardage. 
Clock stopped a moment here. It should be stopped while they set the chains. They don't have a area without the chains as it's first and goal from the nine. My apologies, didn't realize they were inside the 10. Ultimus now, the late handoff. Here's Leasty working his way in, and he's going to score inside of a minute to go. How about the play call by Jason Hale? This is a version of the wraparound draw that Bill Walsh made famous with the 49ers. Ultimus looks like he's going to sprint out. At least he's waiting for it. This puts it into his belly. There's no one there. It's time to score and then give him a little flex at the end. Reed Leasty, big time play. Nine yard touchdown run. Makes it 27 16 with the extra point looming on the Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. And now we see the offense stay on the field. Now you get into the chess game. Well, you went for two, I have to go for two. Aldemus under pressure, gets a block. Looking, and it's incomplete. Boy, even put that one in a spot that gave his receiver Winslow a chance. Rolling to his left, scrambling. He has the uncanny ability to put a football in a correct spot every time. 27-16 on the Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Ayersville, by the way, will get the football to begin the second half. So if you're the pilots, coach, you go. What do you do here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're down by two scores. You have one timeout. Get a good field position and see what you can do with 52 seconds left. Remember, your quarterback, he threw a launch, a laser for a touchdown to Delano. Might as well take some shots here. Special teams groups still huddling with their coaches here. But what a game we've had here at Craig McCord Field. Antwerp does something a little bit different. They don't have a special teams coordinator. The assistant coaches take a phase. So you might be the offensive line coach, and you have to take kickoff. And then you can be the receivers coach. you got to take kickoff return. So they split it up that way. It kind of keeps all the coaches involved on special Back teams because some staffs, what happens is you have a special team coach, and then when it comes to special teams time at practice, the other coaches, they go get water, they talk, they look on their phone, and like, come on, guys, we all got to coach this up. Let's go. Not at Antwerp. They're all involved. And they've had a lot to be excited about the last couple of years. Kickoff fielded at about the 21-yard line. Oh, he's got a chance. Jacob Myler, of Jacob Myler on the return. Well, that's a good thing Reed Leasty made that tackle because they had the wall established. Had he been able to get by Leasty, that was going to be a big return past the 50 or more. You know, 45 seconds left. Go ahead. Make something happen offensively. You're going to have to score some points. You're going to win this football game. Ayersville comes out in the shotgun. We'll see three receivers to our side. Howenstein looking to throws, going to uh, airmail his intended target. That one nearly intercepted in the middle of the field. Yeah, Howenstein never saw the safety sitting about 35 yards deep as Antwerp said, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and loosen up the secondary, Travis Leasty. He's a veteran defensive coordinator. He knows what he's doing. Now, how would you like to have your defensive coordinator be your principal, too? Like, Coach, I didn't like that call. Oh, yeah? How about detention after school? Is, is that a thing they would do? <laughs> Second down, Allenstein's going to roll out. Has a man. Gets out of one hit, trying to get to the sideline. Might not have been by design to get out of bounds, but... Well, McGuire will get out of bounds. Yeah, Stops clock, 32 bounds, seconds to go. Yeah, it's going to hit McGuire in the flat. Tries to get out of the tackle and does of Leasty. Brewer tries to get him down, but gets a good block by Delano. Stops the clock with 32 seconds left. Third and five. Now, if you're Antwerp, do you think maybe getting a stop, maybe you get a shot here? Hey, if I'm calling plays for Antwerp, I'm thinking about scoring every time we have it. They drop nine into coverage. Howenstein looking to throw once again under pressure. Fires this one into coverage, and it's going to be incomplete. 
Oh, and we're very fortunate because this goes off the left hand of Schlachter. That have been inside the 15 yard line. Drop nine into coverage, rush only two. See Robinson 61 trying to give chase. And he's gonna throw, that's uh, Heitzman who had a big play early in the game, almost got to the quarterback that time off the hands of Schlachter, out of bounds. Fourth down and it looks like the punt team for Ayersville out on the field. See how much of this 22 seconds they can chew up. If it was like 10, you'd have your punter run around for a couple extra seconds and unload it. Let's quickly get this one. High punt. Fair catch by Brewer made. And from the seated position now, flag. As there might have been a little John going on between a gunner and one of the blockers to our side of the field. I think they're going to get Scholl, number two. He, he had the guilty hands up, palms in the air look to the sideline. Like, Coach, why'd they call that on me? Uh, it's going to be some, yeah, it's going to be an illegal block, I think. You saw the demonstrative call. Yeah, it might take Antwerp out of what they attempted to do if they're going to be backed up any further. Penalties for a personal foul against the Archers. Boy, we've had just a plethora of handkerchiefs on the ground tonight. And not because of the cold weather. <laughs> it is cold. It is. It's always windy here in Ayersville. Always windy at Antwerp. It's almost like they should put windmills up or something around there. Oh, good idea. Maybe harness the energy. Mm -hmm. And now it'll be interesting if Antwerp's just going to be, yeah, it looks like they're just going to be happy to go out of the half, take a and knee. Back half the distance. You're going to start at the 22. Now you're at the 11. So... Antwerp will just take one knee, and that should do it for a very entertaining opening half of football. So first place in the Green Meadows Conference on the line right now, Antwerp with a lead at the break. We'll have some halftime coverage for you when we return here on WOSN. Twenty-seven sixteen, our score at the half. The Antwerp Archers come to Ayersville to uh, lead the Pilots here. Big matchup. Just heard from uh, Lynn Grohl, BlackSwampFootball.com. Big matchup for Antwerp that's seeking that uh, elusive first ever conference title in football. Mm, they'll go a big way. They get to win here tonight, and then uh, you know two games where you got to believe they'd be favored in mm -hmm. moving forward. You know they would have to uh, make sure that they take her business next week, uh, Paulding at home, where she'd feel confident they could do that. And then uh, would go on the road to uh, Edgerton. And that uh, takes us to a little bit of our trivia question, which you do a great oh, job yeah. of every week. So with the Antwerp Archers at 7-0, and they're guaranteed to have a winning season. This comes after going 9-3 and last year. So when was the last time the Archers had back-to-back -back winning seasons. Mm, my guess, mid-2000s, late 90s, that's what I was guessing. Well, Miles is in the ballpark. The answer, 2006, 2007, went six and four, and then seven and four un under head coach Drew Altimus, now the athletic director, and Mr. Altimus is uh, somewhere in the building, was hovering above us in the, uh, what we generously call the coach's box. There is Coach Altimus, I don't know if we can get the camera up there or not, but uh, Coach Ultimus high up there. The crazy thing is you have to climb the outside ladder to get up to that crow's nest, and that is, that is scary. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I was an assistant coach and the head coach said, like, Miles, I want you to go up there. Coach, I, I, coach you're going to have to top fire the me. stands <laughs> good enough? I'm not sure if hey, I'm. Years ago, I was at Edsel Ford. There's, there's yeah, Coach Aldemus yeah. on the left. Now picture that about 20 feet higher with no railing behind it. And that's where I was at Edsel Ford. Uh, I want to say 1996. You held on to that front bar because if you didn't, you're going to roll <laughs> off the back. Let's take a look at some uh, stats here at the half. As, uh, Earsville again with the. Uh, up to the minute digital scouts, we appreciate. And we're 39 plays, 254 yards. Ayersville 22 for 162. 
Uh, rushing yards, 89 for Antwerp, 132 for Ayersville. Antwerp 12 of 21 passing for 165 yards. Ayersville 2 of 6 for 29. The important number that Miles wants to hear, penalties. Well, they're matching. Mm -hmm. Each team, 6 for 55. And doesn't that look warm and inviting right she now? She does. Look at she doesn't they have got, They got extra seats. We can have all of us go over there and sit and, and do the game from there. She's not wearing gloves or anything. It's got that fire. And it, the cool thing about it is we can smell it from here. Can we, we can talk to Ken Reeker. Ken, can we stretch a monitor out that far? Ooh, that'd be good. Just call it off the monitor. That good camera work right there by Nick Reeker. Young Zooming Nicholas back one. with us. He's had a couple glove changes. Yeah, how about Dad? Nick uh, got Dad's gloves. His, his little fingers were cold, so oh. Dad took off his gloves. Ken Reeker. Gave his son his gloves. That's love right there. It is. So are you going to do the same thing for me? <laughs> no, no. I, I'm keeping these gloves. All right. I like you. I don't love you. Oh, that's how this works. <laughs> I love you, big guy. The mayor of Northwest Ohio, the people's champion, Randy Roberts. So we'll take one quick uh, time out here. We'll come back for second half action at Ayersville after this. Ayersville get the ball as uh, we're just about ready to begin our second half here from McCord Field. Ayersville's uh, football field named after Craig McCord, 208 uh, game winner in his career. Weird that I know that from memory. Miles just looked at me like. <laughs> I'm never savant. amazed at what you know <laughs> when it comes to Northwest Ohio. Of course, the interesting thing is son John, now the head coach at Fairview, which was. Uh, We'll say the bitter rival, but one of those uh, Defiance County rivals. Short return, and a little ankle tackle is going to keep the uh, return man down. Still good field position for Ayersville as we begin the second half. Ayersville's not been able to block Reed Leasty on the, the kickoff on the return. And Leasty gets there again, grabs the ankle of Abe Delano, and Delano tries to do a little spin rooney to get out of it, but Leasty held on. So before we get deep into our uh, third quarter, I want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Ayersville and Antwerp is the State Bank. Invest in a Northwest West Central Ohio skilled objective and caring financial planners. I want to thank the State Bank being with us all season long here in our uh, game of the week. First down run. We'll uh, pick up a couple of yards. Is Antwerp's going to, I'm sorry, Ayersville keep this on the ground. Now kind of went back to the power side. Sent the formation to the field, comes back. See if Antwerp would overload the formation to the field. A little slipped foot or also would have been a big gain for Ayersville. Is your biggest defender for Ayersville just holding on to the football now? That's something that we talked about, right, coming into the game. If they could win the time of possession and win the line of scrimmage, that was their shot tonight. It's a gain of three, second and seven. Howenstein's going to pull this one out. He'll keep it himself. We get tracked down from behind by Leasty, close to a first down. Looks like it's going to be third and about one. You're going to see the offensive lineman pull and get in front of him. That's Cordaway, 52, leading away, along with Clark. Quarterback counter off the outside fake that time. Sets up a makeable third down and two. Antwerp fans making some noise, trying to cheer on their defense. Got the cowbell out, Randy. Yeah, we got a couple air horns. Been a lot of noisemakers here. Howenstein straight ahead. And it looks like on second effort, on the bottom of the pile, we'll have the first down. Hey, just like that battle when Howenstein gets his shoulder pads lowered, right? He can get going in a hurry. Zero to 60 in three seconds. He's a sports car. He gets going so fast real quick when he gets a direct snap. First and 10, just shy of midfield. The Pilot A logo looks backward because we're set up on the visitor's side. A good touch, as Miles mentioned. Different numbers. Those are the seniors playing their final regular season game at home. May still be playoff game. Quick pitch again to Burner, and he is going to take about five hits. And it looks like it's going to be... A yard, maybe two, as the down box continues to move. Yeah, good film study on this, right? Look at Fuller come flying up. 
And already the third time in this football game that we see Cohen Heitzman in the backfield making a play. And Cohen, not a guy that has made a ton of plays for this Antwerp defense, but he's come up big in a big game tonight. Second and eight from the midfield stripe. Might be one of the longest possessed drives of the night here, two and a half minutes. Mayorsville well, can't win a shootout. They got to keep things kind of low. Yeah, I think they might have talked about that. A little razzle-dazzle. Burner looking to throw. He's going to be tripped up back in the 45-yard line. It's going to be a fake option, and they're just going to flip it. Back to Burner. He's looking vertical, but it's well covered by Antwerp. And at least he's going to come just get enough of the ankle to get Burner to the ground. Burner had a guy out in the flat but couldn't see him because at least he is right on top of him. Mark him down at the 46, loss of uh, four. It's third and 12. Jason Hale, head coach for Antwerp, turns. He wants some noise. Fans oblige. Allenstein looking to throw. He unloads deep downfield, and he's going to overshoot everyone. Incomplete, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, it looked like a low miscommunication on the route. He thought he was going to stay true to the seam. Delano kind of turned it into a skinny little bit of a post. The throw goes on his outside ear over top of him, or else it might have been a big play for Ayersville as he got behind that Antwerp secondary. Promising drive, bogs down. And it is now fourth and 12 at the 46 yard line. Punt team again on the field for Ayersville. Antwerp's mishandled a couple plays and Antwerp's, or Ayersville I should say, has kind of flipped the field a couple of times. Brewer again calls for the fair catch. He'll make this one. He learned his lesson, like you mentioned, uh, the first punt of the night, kind of let it go by him, and it took another 12, 15 yards. Well, he had another one in that second quarter where it kind of almost got away from him. He had to backpedal and barely got it. Yeah, and ended up uh, in the seated position to make the catch. There's a penalty on top of that as well, so it just seems like the mistakes just kind of pile up on top of each other. Antwerp will take over at their own 23, the first possession of the second half for the Archers. They'll come out with three receivers to our side. Nearly got someone to jump. Looked like Delano. Yeah, you got Delano kind of no man's lad, right? He's between the slot and the line of scrimmage. Well, he's got his sights set on Carson Altimus. He's gonna make a beeline. They'll throw away from him. Good job reading that. Out to Leasty, who gets good yardage on first down. Take a look at the defense, see if they're overplaying to one side, run the bubble to the back, to the outside. Burner comes flying up, almost has him, but that's Brady Clark from the inside position. That's a defensive lineman running out there to make the tackle on the sideline. If you're a defensive coordinator, Chuck Martinez, you gotta be excited seeing that effort. So Leasty forced out of bounds after three, so it's second and seven. Clock still running under eight to go in our third quarter. Oh, these receivers, they get their 10,000 steps in just by getting aligned <laughs> on every pre, every snap. Where you start at isn't necessarily where you finish. Looks a lot like the CFL. Throw into the flat, that one's gonna be caught. As McGuire's gonna make sure that goes for a minimal gain. Yeah, one thing that this Ayersville defense has used at times is dropping eight into coverage. See, there's the nose and the two ends. The tackles are going to be the only guys that rush, and then you drop all those guys into coverage, and it makes it tougher for the offense to find someone open. Third and four. Ultimus gets everyone to the line, and again, they'll look over. Well, when Brewer's by himself to a side, they're doubling them now. You see the... Pressed by Burner, and then the safety helped the top. Ultimus fires middle of the field, has a man open again. It'll be another first down as Fuller will get out across the 40 to the 41. Pick up about 11. You're asking an inside linebacker, McGuire, to get there. He just overruns it. Fuller settles in. And the thing that is so impressive about Fuller, Randy, is his ability to turn and get vertical on that first step. He is quicker than a hiccup. Quick pitch again, Leasty. 
And Leasty able to come to the near sideline. He'll get a yard or two. More importantly for Antwerp, that clock continues to run. And I don't want to jinx it. I don't think we've seen a little yellow hanky. Uh, I think all the officials' arms are tired from throwing them in the first half. We had a Getting their shoulders ton. checked out. Yeah, trainers are in there with them. Ro rotator them. cuff injuries. <laughs> There was a lot of flags in that first half. Yeah, 12 total for 110 yards. Each team penalized six times, 55 yards that opening half. Ultimus with the fake. Can't find anyone. He's going to take off. Looking for the sideline. And oh, that was designed to dive for the first down. Looks good for TV. We'll take a look at the replay. This is going to be the screen and go, but it's well covered by the pilots. But the bad news is you've got a magician, Mr. Cool, that settles down. And then, woo, I'm going to fly through the air, Mom, and get the first down. Officials are going to say is not a first down. Oh, they are going to move the sticks. Okay. It took them a minute. They set the down box and then kind of move the sticks, but the down box doesn't necessarily change downs quickly. So it gets a little confusing. You see that in the middle of your screen. So it looks like third and 10, and really it's a brand new first down. They do get it taken care of. Antwerp has the ball at the Ayersville 48. Here's Leasty straight ahead. Jukes one man and nearly had a second one, but he's brought down after a gain of nine. Yeah, the thing about Leasty is so tough. See the quickness to get through the hole, the explosiveness, and then the shiftiness to go sideways. Howenstein barely gets him, or else that would have been another big play for Antwerp. Had to somersault them down to the 40-yard line. And you see the alignment, only two down linemen and two linebackers. Really, only six in the box, but it's a wide six because the outside linebackers, that's inviting inside run by Antwerp. There's Aldemus looking to throw again. Leads this man, what a catch! As that is hauled in. That's Winslow that Winslow, goes up. The sophomore has made a couple big plays here this afternoon. Let's see, out in the skinny post combo. The flat defender jumps on the out. He hit it between the safety and the corner. Boy, another well-thrown ball by Ultimus. And as you said, Winslow climbs the ladder. He picks up 20, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Twenties again. We had our fair share of points, but this seems to be maybe the most offensive flow both teams have had. Aldemus bouncing to the outside, held up momentarily. I believe that was Delano. Maybe had him by the jersey, and finally he's going to be brought down. He's just one of those guys that kind of remember Barry Sanders. No one ever really got a good shot on him, right? Carson you look like you're going to have him dead to rights, and all of a sudden he just finds a way to squirt by. And put that football away. Coach Hale had to be nervous seeing that kind of floating around out there. Put that ball high and tight. Coach Hale's telling him, but Ultimus, another big play, sometimes with the arm, other times with the feet. Yeah, picked up eight on that scramble, second and two from the 12. This time it is to give the least. He's going to run right into that line and push back. You know, he attacked the mesh that time. Ayersville got there in a hurry, made it to be made it a tough read. You see Ultimus talking to Lisi right there. Think he wanted to pull it, but the defense was on top of him so quick. Yeah, number 50, Noah Bodai, Jr. Good looking kid, 6'1, 260, part of the stop there. Third down. What's four, what has been four down territory. Trying to cut up field. I see Bodai again on the tackle, back-to-back -back stops for him. Carrier, tackle by number nine, Weston McGuire. Now, sometimes when you're a spread team and you get close to the, uh, the end zone, it is tough. You see Ultimus going under center here. Looks like Sneak. Fourth and short. Didn't need much. Carson Ultimus on the carry for the you got to really credit Robinson there. It is tough for a center. 
You've been snapping shotgun all night long, and then all of a sudden the quarterback comes up underneath to get that ball in the right spot. Got to credit the senior getting the snap down with the quarterback. Allows them to convert that first down. Gives the Archers a first and goal from the nine. A little pistol look. A throw out of it out to the flat. Parker Moore trying to make three defenders miss, and finally he's going to be brought down after a gain of one or two. Pass is oh, look at the feet. I thought it was Hill from the, the Chiefs and the Dolphins. Just making people miss. And finally, he's going to take Weston McGuire wrapping him up. Now, the first time you see Weston McGuire low final play will be the only time you see Weston McGuire low final play. He is just flying around the football field. It's a blur, number nine, flying around, making tackle after tackle. Second and goal. Now, Moore might have been a little banged up. They had to have another receiver run out of the field. This Moore is down. It's just like intended to be a shovel pass, and no one back there. This is a free football. Nairsville's going to have it. Well, the ball popped loose. We might have to take a look at that one. A big mistake for Antwerp, and Ayersville is going to get this one at the 45. That's open option. A pitch to no one that's there. Yep. Yeah, hey, Schlachter is the guy they're reading. And there's nobody there. You saw Ultimus, all, as soon as he pitched it, he realized it, and it's Hanencraft that picks it up. He's got a convoy of blue jerseys in front of him, breaks it all the way across midfield. What a huge turn of events in this football game as it looked like Antwerp was going in to seal this thing in a big way. You know, Ultimus so good with the football, just one interception. So that's gonna go as a fumble. Going in to score, and instead you give the ball up, and your opposing team has it at your 45. Delayed handoff, Burner. He's going to have nowhere to go. It's, I don't think he was welcome in Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Robinson said, said you know, no way, you're not allowed in this block party. This is an archer party only. Boy, he just engulfed Burner. Kind of deflating. You come off of a big turnover, you got momentum, and then all of a sudden, you get stopped on the first play after that. And give credit to the Antwerp coaches as they realized that that was uh, a big play on the fumble. Told their guys to stay within themselves, calm down. Yeah, you saw Landon Brewer doing that to other guys, right? Had the hands, guys, settle down. We'll be all good. Let's make tackles. Second and nine. Fake this one, Howenstein, and he's going to go forward to about the 40. Howenstein again going to keep it off the pole. Reed Lee, he flies, just knives in from behind, shoots that gap. You always tell linebackers, if you see that hole and can catch it from behind, go ahead, but you better make the play. About the third time he's made an ankle tackle. Ayersville yeah, doesn't have to snap the ball again. It doesn't look like they're going to. So time will run off, and for as long as it took that slow developing first half to play, we've had an extremely quick third quarter. Still at 27-16, we'll take a break. Big play, big fourth quarter coming up for you after this on WOSN. We want to thank the State Bank for being our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Antwerp and Ayersville. Third down run coming up here. It's going to set up a fourth down. A little pushing and shoving after the play. Weston McGuire trying to try to get a call on Antwerp, but the official's not going for it. So before we get to fourth down, I want to tell you that our title sponsor for our broadcast tonight is the State Bank. Invest in Northwest West Central Ohio skilled objective and caring financial planners. Uh, no doubt about it. Fourth down, you've got to go. Urban Meyer always says if you want to be a champion, you've got to get fourth and one. Here's your chance, and, and uh, Harrisville, go get it. Uh, it's going to be that quick lead toss. See everyone lined up left side. Houtenstein trying to run that way, but it's outside. Brewer's trying to bring him down. This is going to be close. Seeing the lines in on our side in right at. See, I think he has it right there if he just tucks it up and goes, but he bounces it. I'm not, no, I'm not sure he got it right there. Brewer comes up, makes the tackle, gets some help. But did he get it? Yes, he did. They're going to say first down barely. 
Yeah, yeah, they went ahead and effort. moved the sticks. They didn't look much. It's a first down at the 35. Ayersville down 11, so you're going to need a touchdown and a field goal, but they've gone for two now every time we've seen them. So I don't know if they have much of a kicking game, so this might be two scores. First down run, good one, trying to stay active. So oh, jumps Burner on the pile late there by Burner, but again, no call. As the officials, I know, maybe they left their yellow hankies in the locker room. Oh, don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. After 12 in the first half, it's been a smooth <laughs> second half. It's amazing how, how just quicker the quarter goes when we're not stopping for a penalty every play. Well, this might be the biggest sequence of the season for Arizona, right? How do they not come away with points on this drive and win this football game? They've got to get it done here. Yeah, this would almost be a 14-point score when you consider sure. where Antwerp was at on the five-yard line. Howenstein into that line, Antwerp doing everything they can to push him back. It's gonna bring up a third down. And Austin Myler stays home. They've seen that play over and over again. Really, this Ayersville offense partner, they're down to about three plays. Quarterback keep off of the jet sweep, outside run and inside zone. Third and one from the 26 yard line. You got Schlachter versus Winslow on the inside if they want it. There's the quarterback keep. Howenstein powers through for the first down. Howenstein's going to follow McGuire, who gets a good block and burner. Well, he's going to pay the price right there as he gets knocked to the ground. I think it was a little friendly fire as he ran into the back of one of his own guys. I don't, I don't think he saw who the culprit was. Just all of a sudden, I'm in a seated position. So they're going to take a moment to move the sticks here. Already down to 9, 10 and counting left to go in this one. There's that stack formation they began the game with down here to the near side. Howenstein with a fake. Now he's going to try to throw this away. And that one was dangerous, and it's going to come up incomplete. That's Robinson applying to pressure who... Our broadcast partner, Mark Schein, correctly said, is big. <laughs> That's why you're the best in the business, Mark Schein. Correct. Robinson in the face of Hallenstein. Hallenstein tries to get rid of it and does, but boy, it was a close call. Could have been intercepted had that ball traveled a little bit more. Stops our clock with eight minutes, 55 seconds left. This Ayersville team, not in much of a hurry. Howenstein with a fake. Now he's going to try to pitch it. The burner with about four men on him, nowhere to go. Is that a case of just trying to do too much? Well, it's inside quarterback run off of the outside fake action. And this Antwerp defense is just all ready for it. They've seen it time and time again. And a real dangerous play. Late toss out to Burner, not by design, just trying to make a play. But you see Gale there again, the number 51, making a big play for the Archers. And when Antwerp did that, they lost the ball, and Ayersville was able to return it out to the 45. Now the Pilots trying to cash in. Howenstein looking to throw, has time. Fires towards the end zone, out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. No one really open as the Antwerp secondary alertly played off, kept all the receivers in front, stayed true to their zones, had one-on-one -on -one in the back end, but Burner never really open. Fourth down, what do you come up here if you're Ayersville? Fourth down and about 12, well, it better be your best play of the year. This is huge if you're gonna win this football game. 12 yards hasn't exactly been easy for Ayersville to get. Especially when you need it all at once. See Schlachter, he's 32, lined up to the near side. Howenstein instead fires middle of the field through the hands of his intended target. Incomplete. And Antwerp will take over with the football. And Delano's going to come underneath. Going to settle down in the zone. As Cyrus Gale can't get underneath of it. A little bit lower throw, and I believe Delano comes up and gets it. 
for first down. Ball kind of sailed on Hellenstein. After the turnover, defense holds for Antwerp. They take over. See on our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard, 7.59 to go. The Archers holding on to an 11 point lead. Here's Aldemus run on first down, plenty of space into the open field. Now it's a foot race. The 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5 into the end zone. And just like that, 76 yards, and the Archers have a score. Talk about getting from point A to B in a hurry. Inside fake the Leasty, and then there's just nobody outside. There's a couple dark blue jerseys that have the angle. He just outruns it. Look at Mr. Cool, Drew Ultimus. Big time. And then the steely glance back to the bench. Let's get it done, fellas. What a touchdown. So why run out the clock when you just score in one play? And now the special teams unit will have to go out there. Quick change, catches them all by surprise. It's kind of like hockey, a line change, right? Hey, guys, we scored. You got to go extra point. Oh, that's right. Boy, that well, they're going to go for two. That might be the fastest touchdown that we've seen in a while. He ate up some ground. Ultimus, he's going to look. They'll throw the fade. And Brewer's going to haul it in for the two-point conversion. <laughs> Well, Doug Billman, basketball coach at Antwerp, he's gonna like seeing the big fella go up and just box out. All he does is just turn on the corner, boxes him out like a rebound drill, and goes up and gets it. Oh, what a touchdown run by Ultimus, opens the door. Archer is getting close to that first GMC title. We'll take a timeout here at WOSN. Thirty-five, sixteen, and we're pulling away, and uh, we got to give credit to Mark Shine. Hey, number seven for Antwerp really fast, according to him. <laughs> oh, Mark does a great job with obvious observations. It's a little, little uh, living room uh, <laughs> color commentating. Well, thanks for tuning in, Mark. We know at least have we have one viewer Is he yell yelling at the TV. Is he just adding in? Yeah, Cyrus Gale was the one that was on the ground as he had a little bit of a cramp issue. And hey, Coach Jason Hale, he becomes a trainer also. He went out there and grabbed the toe. And hey, small schools, you do a little bit of everything. What a matchup. Yeah, Antwerp comes in number four in the state division seven, Earsville 14. More importantly, is where their standings are at in the computer poll. Two kickers. Crossover, this one fielded Delano at about the 31-yard line. He's got some moves, and he's going to get this one towards midfield. Still on his feet, and he's going to be brought down, or he's not going to be brought down. That pile continues to move. Finally, the pile falls down. Now a flag, because there is a little pushing and shoving in there. Looked like he was going to be brought down by shirt tail about the 40-yard line. Well, that play had a little bit of everything, didn't it? Had the fake toss back. And then Delano says, you know what, I'll take care of it myself. Carries about 12 white jerseys with him for a while, and then a flag comes in. And they're going to add more, as I believe, call is a face mask. A face mask violation against the archers. Got a fake. We'll got this. We got a little bit of that. Usually a fake doesn't really, oh, they got away with a block in the back back there. Officials didn't see it. But I thought Delano was going to step out, and then it gives him a little okie doke. Says, I'll keep going. Somewhere in that giant pile of humanity, someone grabbed the face mask. And so, Ayersville in really good shape to get the matching score. They're gonna have a little bit of work to do now, down 35-16, seven and a half minutes still to go in this one. A stacked formation to the outside. They've switched it up though. Schlachter is the up receiver this time. So you know someone had a different game that's already concluded, why don't you tell them go ahead and flip on WOSN. Looking for the end zone, intercepted by Brewer. I believe they'll call it a touchback. They say he's gonna get out of bounds, just out of the goal line. 
Oh, what a play. We're going to take a look at the replay. And I bring the motion. Fake it to Br uh, Burner. And then the wheel route behind it tries to hit. I believe it's McGuire. Throws it late. And then Brewer nonchalantly steps in front. Shows everybody, hey, uh, here's the football. It belongs to us. Another takeover or a turnover. Antwerp inside the one. They'll have it. 7.22 to go. This was an Antwerp defense that had seven interceptions coming into the night. 11 fumble recovery. So 18 takeaways coming in tonight. And they have built on that total in a big way. Now, might be some. Oh, they got to throw. I think it's the right call because. He was out of the end zone when he caught it. Yeah, he danced, it. He danced yeah. out. So yeah, Some of the locals here are trying to say that his momentum took him out of the end zone. Now I'm not sure he actually caught it in the end zone. So we'll take a look here one more time. We're back to live action. Ultimus just going to get this one out of the one-yard line. He got pushed back into his own end zone, but well after forward progress stop now, looks like a couple teammates are going to help him out. See, that's, the, uh, that's what's great jersey. about offensive linemen, right? They care. Did you see them run over? Cyrus Gale says, hey, buddy, you know what? Your jersey's not right. Your shoulder no. pad's sticking out. Offensive linemen they, are, are great people. They understand for the places that they want to go deep into this playoff run that uh, Carson Ultimus may be their yeah, meal he's, ticket. Yeah, he's a, a little yeah. bit important, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's the uh, kickoff return by Delano. Ultimus again just under center here. This time they'll give... Oh, slipping down. Yeah, Antwerp wants a face mask called in the worst way. You see Jason Hale right there imploring the official to call it. Now, this is the interception by Brewer. We'll take a look at, see if he catches it in the end zone and his momentum takes it out. He's going to step in front right there. Well, you can see him go. Yeah, his left foot was out when he caught it. Yeah, you can see him kind of go around the pylon. I think it was the right call by that sideline official. Nice job. Ayersville's moved this out to the, or, sorry, Antwerp's moved this out to the four yard line, third and six. Applying some pressure, trying to throw this one up for grabs. And Brewer's gonna get this one. Oh, tug of the jersey isn't gonna stop him and that's gonna move the archers out to the 31. Now what? Weston McGuire almost blows this up. See him reach over top, gets in the face of Ultimus. Ultimus just throws it up. Trust your receiver. Some big time fighting for that one. I believe he's going to beat Fishpaw for that one. Another big play for Mr. Brewer. Yeah, big gain will get him out. So from inside the five out to the 31, five and a half and counting. And it's actually Wolfram that he had one on one. Brewer beat Wolfram that one, used his height. Well, it could have been Ronnie Lott out there, and I don't <laughs> think it would have mattered to him. First down run back to the ground. Now, question for Antwerp is, do you have enough of a run game to grind out this final five minutes? Yeah, think about them. They're so explosive, right? You try to run clock, and your quarterback runs 70 for a touchdown. <laughs> Sometimes running clock is scoring points. The thing I do like, though, is they've slowed down, huddling up now, letting mm -hmm. the clock run. You'll see Ultimus snap it somewhere around five or inside of five. Yeah, big blow. We see Parker Moore on our sideline out. Someone had to uh, bring a jacket out for him. Not with his uh, helmet, it's the stocking cap on. This will be a big blow, and it looks like Antwerp is going to let the play clock run down. They'll take a timeout. We'll take one as well here. Four and a half to go. Archer's trying to put this one away. And we're lining up here, second and nine. Let that play clock run down. Taking a huddle. Now they got to get some receivers out in the field again. They've uh, had one injury as Parker Moore has uh, missed some time here in the second half. Now hopefully he's going to be okay moving forward. Big part of this offense. 
Back to the shotgun with Ultimus. Keep this one himself, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. Well, he saw the option. Look, inside fake. Ultimus elects to pull it, and he has the option to throw it out to Camden Fuller, but smartly doesn't put the ball at risk, just holds on to it. Makes it third and 14. Glimmer hope still for Ayersville. Ayersville's got three timeouts inside of four minutes. You'll start to see them being used. If you're Antwerp, though, you got to make a lot of mistakes to lose this football game moving forward. Just take care of the football. Let the clock be your friend. You should get the victory here tonight. Archer's trying to improve to 8-0, and it looks like they'll take another timeout here. He's having a little more confusion on the field here. 35-16 as the Archers inch ever so closer to 8-0. and For wrapping up, holding it home at Edgerton. Not official yet, but should this hold, and we haven't seen what Edgerton's done tonight, early indication will lead us to uh, Leanne Field in Edgerton for a Week 10 showdown between the Archers and the Bulldogs. Yeah, it's a really cool place to go do a football game at, too. If you've never been to Edgerton for a game, kind of a little bit like in a valley, right? Very picturesque. I'm sorry, Leanne Field, I think, is Eden. I think I had the wrong one. Whatever it is, it's a really nice field. So, Williams County football field, so my apologies. See the mayor every once in a while, get something wrong. Third down now, we're gonna stop. We're gonna have a false start on Antwerp coming out of the huddle. I'm not sure how that can be called when they never really came set. The only thing I can figure out is Robinson put his hand on the football, took it off the football. They will call that once in a while. Third and 14 turns into third and 19. Now the officials realize that no one had actually moved the football. Those are the best kind of penalties, right? Where you don't get penalized <laughs> yards? All phantom yards. <laughs> you remember uh, playing ball in the backyard, have a ghost runner on second? <laughs> third and 19. Well, I had trees spaced out like on the property line, so... You had one tree was the first down, then yeah. you were the next one. Yep. So draw play on third down. And Leasty will get a few yards here. And the ball now we'll get a stoppage. Yeah, Leasty laboring Leastie a little time, bit. Yeah. Went back to that wraparound draw that they scored the touchdown with. Let's see what happens here. Gets tackled by Hanencraft and kind of, oh, his lower leg got twisted up underneath him. When you guys used to play uh, football in the backyard, did you have the Mississippi count for yep. the pass rush? Yep, 10 Mississippi. 10 Mississippi? Yep. You guys were like the older uh, arena league. You scored 100 <laughs> points a game. We were one, a three Mississippi. We were allowed one, a blitz. One blitz, one blitz yep. per four downs. You had to yell it, though. Timeout blitz. Yeah. Shotgun, and then you just held the ball back. Yeah. Yep, yep. So we'll take one uh, more time out here as they take a look at the injured players. Antwerp gets set to punt. Punt team on the field of four Antwerp here. At least he trying to gut this out, but you see him limping to the sideline. He will uh, head out. As Antwerp may try to play this final 3-39 without him. 35-16. Archers just that close away to improving to 8-0. and zero. More importantly, they'll be the last undefeated team in the Green Meadows Conference. So Brewer will hang on a minute, sends this one high in the air. Punt be fielded at the 45 and taken down right there. Good special teams tackle made. As Fuller will get the stop. And Ayersville will have it. They'll mark it at their own 44. And they will call it up to the 45. 
first and ten Ayersville from their own 45 yard line. Howenstein in the shotgun. He's got four receivers. He'll send one in motion. Gets the snap. He's trying to step up. Now he's got to run. There's plenty of room middle of the field. He'll give himself up. Looks like he'll pick up just enough for the first down. Stops the clock. So we take a look here. The one first down picked up for Ayersville. Howenstein looking to run once again, going to that home team sideline. He'll be brought down. This time they'll say in the field of play. Good gain. It's going to bring him second. And it looks like about three or so. Clock becoming a factor under three minutes to go. Ayersville needs a couple scores in our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. Howenstein, second down, looking to throw once again. Fires this one towards the end zone, caught for the touchdown. Blake pass is complete to Abe Delano. For Abe Delano, haul that one in. Don't know if that was the intended target, a big score. So Howenstein rolls out. Trying to step up, just heaves this one. And it's going to go over the head of everyone, but Delano back there to haul it in. Now 35-22. See how Howenstein, that power formation, and he'll run in the two-point conversion. 35-24, still a little hope for Antwerp as they try to hold on to that lead. We'll take a timeout here in WOSN. Thirty-five twenty-four. That lead uh, shrunk. The big touchdown pass. Abe Delano able to hold that in, and now as Miles Holiday brought up. During that time out here, a little unside kick action could be coming here for Ayersville. It took, that usually is uh, Miles Holiday's move down to the field. That usually the indication, Miles, the team takes an extra moment in the uh, huddle on the sideline. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you get it all straight, squared away. You try to pick out who you want to go after, too. They've taken a look at the setup for Antwerp and said, we're going to go after number 21 or number 82. Pick out the guy that you want to try to kick the ball to. But Antwerp alertly has put a lot of good guys with good hands out on the field. Yeah, there's a couple lineman numbers, especially the uh, visitor sideline. You see Robinson, one of those players out there. And here comes that onside kick. Ball's going to squibble around. Finally picked up by Antwerp. They'll have it at the 45-yard line. Well, they got the great hop that they wanted. Just didn't get there in time. Yes, number eight, Tavon Scholl, sophomore, will have that one. So Antwerp will have it, 2.40 to go. Ayersville with two timeouts remaining, so Antwerp can't just sit on the football. There's the handoff on first down as that pile will move forward and it looks like one of those timeouts will be used right here. So Miles pretty obvious, Ayersville kind of putting uh, all their eggs on getting a big stop right here. Well, one thing you got to remember too is you're talking in the huddle, get the football out, right? So if you're Antwerp, two hands on it, and don't fight for extra yards. Just go straight down. The only thing that can hurt you is you've turned the football over and give Ayersville an opportunity to score quickly. They can only stop the clock one more time. We'll do that here, 2.35 left to go. So 
Antwerp's job here, basically get this first down, make Ayersville use its last time out. Second and about eight coming up. Archers have it at their own 47, or you just rely, as Carson Altimus did earlier, had a 74-yard touchdown run. Good to see Leasty back in the ball game, though. Leasty going to carry a defender. That is Weston McGuire out across midfield as Ayersville will use its last timeout. So big third down here for uh, Antwerp with 2.27 to go. If you can convert this one, maybe get one more first down, Miles, kind of put this one away. Yeah, don't be surprised if they run the same type of action and Ultimus holds onto it as the defense is collapsing quickly on Leasty. That was the same play that Ultimus scored the 24 or 74-yard touchdown run on in the second half. Hey, turn around short on your good side, Miles. We got you. Turn, there you go. This is our Miles Holiday. Hey, I got to tell you, it is a lot colder down here than it is <laughs> up there. It is absolutely freezing. Hey, if you if you keep walking towards the end zone, you might catch some of the fire that's down there, though. If you take a look, at that party has grown. It went from one lady <laughs> with her feet up to a bunch of people. So they had some extra seats there. They might have room for you, buddy. I'm going to go get a s'more after this. A third and three. It's that option. Ultimus, nowhere to go. He's going to turn the corner. Looking for the pylon. He'll have the first down. Hunting for the sticks, he'll do just that. He got out of bounds, but more importantly, got the big first down. It's going to stop the clock with 2.19 to go, but the Antwerp faithful sitting in front of us kind of know what's coming next. Now, Ayersville unable to stop the clock. So Antwerp will just run three more plays here. They're gonna let this one run all the way down. Play clock down to five. Try to get this off in time. They will, low snap, but it's not gonna matter. And Ultimus took a knee. I don't think everyone realized that's what he did. Got a late hit. It's gonna go uncalled. Yeah, that's a good job by the officials not calling a late hit. Delano had already launched himself to make the hit when Ultimus put his knee on the ground. Well, it kind of looked like from the player's standpoint that he was just reaching down. That was a low snap. So we'll play on. That is probably the least of everyone's concern here with a minute and a half to go. Well, I get it, though. If you're, if you're an Antwerp <laughs> fan and you, anyone hits Ultimus, you, you're upset. You don't want anyone touching oh, Ultimus. You're, you're putting him in a glass case, right? You're right. Now a victory formation for the Archers. They're going to go to 8-0. One second to go on the play clock. They'll snap it. They'll do it one more time here. Officials may also do what they can, taking a little time spotting the ball, trying to sync up the game clock and the play clock. So right now, a difference of about uh, 28, 29 seconds. Means that Archers uh, will have to snap it one more time. And everyone making some noise. A big win for Antwerp as the Archers remain undefeated. They're in the driver's seat in the GMC. And now they're going to make sure an alignment's all right. Everyone piled up on top of them. Now we're going to get a little pushing and shoving. Coaches are going to come out as a little extracurricular activity after this one. I like how proactive Andrew Mickey and Jason Hale were. They went out and grabbed their guys in a hurry, make sure this thing didn't escalate. And Coach Hale having a conversation with the officials. I know the officials say coaches don't really intimidate you, but if Coach Hale makes his way towards you, See what we've got here is multiple flags were thrown. So we're gonna call an unsportsmanlike. Do we do we is this like basketball? Do we double tech them? Uh, I think it as long as nobody gets ejected. Remember, if someone gets ejected tonight, that's gonna affect next week. So you really gotta keep your cool. So they'll wind the clock once again. And the officials also know that it's a pointless spot in the ball. 
So they'll just watch the final 15 seconds tick off. So momentous win for the Antwerp Archers. They'll go to 8-0, 5-0 in the GMC. Coach Hale fired up. Final seconds tick away in our final tonight on our Antwerp Exchange Bank scoreboard. 35-24, Antwerp gets the win here in Ayersville. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, or Miles Holiday will have our dynamic due to the game when we return here on WOSN. Thirty-five twenty-four. Our final. Now, as the teams uh, huddling with their coaches, a big win for the Antwerp Archers as uh, they've come here and gotten a big win. As uh, coaches continue to kind of work on some players on the sidelines, there might have been uh, a somewhat serious injuries. That no, Parker Moore down there, as Miles might be able to see that a little bit better than we can. Yeah, it looks like a leg injury as he's uh, getting assistance walking. Yeah, they're going to bring the Gator right there over to you, Miles. So we'll have, uh, have him. And now we'll see the uh, Antwerp team. It's the uh, singing the fight song. And now. We'll see if our Miles Holiday is able to grab the victorious quarterback. He's going to make his way over to him. I got him right here. All right. So, see if they can get some people to clear. All right. And it looks like our Miles Holiday is with our dynamic dude of the day. Our dynamic dude of the game. There it is right there. You got the helmet. Carson Altimus, uh, this atmosphere, absolutely amazing. This community seems to really embrace you guys and, the, and this magical run you guys are on. How special is this? Well, this has been a special season, you know. When's the last time we've ever gone 7-0 in Antwerp history? And everyone knows that here. We know this was a big game to win the conference title. And they all brought it and brought the energy, and it helped us win this game. Yeah, let's talk about this game. How are you guys able to be so effective offensively against this really tough Ayersville defense? We just put in the game plan. We look at film. We know what they do and we just adjust and make plays with them. Yeah, one of the guys that you count on to make big plays, even when they double cover them, Landon Brewer, it yeah. seems like you said there's two guys on him, doesn't matter. I'm going to take shots with the uh, big play Brewer. Yeah, no matter who I see on him, I know I'm going to throw it up, and he's going to go and get it and get us some yards. You guys uh, got a couple games left in GMC, but you're in the driver's seat. How special would it be? What would it mean for you guys to get that first ever GMC title in school history? It would mean everything. Like you said, it's never been done before, and we know there's been great teams behind us that have done it, that have not done it. It'd be amazing just to bring it home. Yeah, Mr. Cool, Carson Ultimus, our dynamic dude of the game. Congratulations, go get him. Randy, this guy was absolutely dynamic tonight. Yeah, he kind of put uh, his touches on it with that long touchdown run that to put this one away, and a big win for uh, Antwerp. And again, they've uh, got a, one more showdown in a couple of weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, as uh, they look to uh, continue on this uh, magical season as uh, they've really kind of taken off. We want to thank everyone made our night here at Ayersville possible, starting with uh, Rafi Manriquez, the AD here at Ayersville High School. Of course, Ken Rieker, our director, producer, Curtis and Nick working the cameras, and of course, Kelly Beck at Master Control at our WOSN studios in Lima. So again, our final 35-24. <clears throat> and we get the win here. They move to 8-0, and more importantly, sole possession of first place in the Green Meadows Conference. So for my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.